Dear Heavenly Father, we just lift you up, Father God. We glorify your holy name, Lord God. We praise you, Holy Lord Jesus. We thank you for bringing us to the times that we are in right now. Lord God, we thank you for every single uh, show that goes by. It seems that, Father, your confirmations from the throne room never never seem to decrease. They increase every single cycle, every single show. Lord God, we are so anointed. We are so touched and blessed and anointed with your Holy Spirit. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you will dump down your Holy Spirit upon every listener of this radio show. Lord God, we just thank you for the time that we are in right now. We thank you for the opportunity to be uh, doers of the word and not just hearers of the word, Father God. We praise your holy name for placing upon many of us a spirit of boldness to get out there and help other people understand what time it is. Father God, I pray that that spirit of boldness will fall upon other listeners of this radio show show who have not started the harvest work. Father, I pray that you will bring us all together and anoint us with your Holy Spirit. Give us a a powerful spirit of strength to uh, see the opportunities that are laid before us, to hear your still small voice in our lives, to hear and understand the the, the opportunities that that you present before us, Lord God, to to witness to people in in the grocery store lines, to say just the right thing to to a person at work. Uh, Father God, we just, now is the time, we know the time is now, we praise you for these conferences confirmations father father these confirmations they're so awesome they sustain us we praise you for that we thank you so much for those father god lord god i pray in the name of jesus that you will just touch every listener of this radio show Father God, that you will place upon them a powerful anointing. Father God, that you will dump down your Holy Spirit upon them. Lord God, if any people are struggling with the, with any kinds of sin in their lives, any types of iniquity or perversions in their lives, Father God, any kinds of behavioral issues, any kinds of disobedience before you, Father God, whatever it is that is struggling, that is a struggle within their life, whether it be an addiction of some type, Father God, whether it be something that they, they uh, you know, something that has happened to them in their past that that tarnishes their heart and how they feel about other people around them, Father God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you will come down upon them, that that, that a supernatural uh, miracle will fall upon them, Lord God, and that you will place a change upon their heart. Father, we just lift lift up these people that are struggling. We lift up these people that are struggling with smoking. We lift up these people that are struggling with drugs. We lift up these people that are struggling with with even uh, pharmaceutical drugs, Father, in their lives. Father, help these people get to the place that you need them to be. Help them seek medical assistance so that they can be right with you and law abiding in every way. Lord God, we want not that not a single person to be left behind. We know what your scripture says. The bar is raised very high. Father God, we know the horrors that are, that we face. We see those things through the testimonies of people like Maurice and other people that we've had on the radio show. We know that that the demons of death are going to overcome this earth. We know what's going to happen in Joel 2. We know what's going to happen in the horrors that will be revealed in Isaiah 13. Father, let not one person and listen and listening to this radio show fall short of your glory fall short of your mercy father god in the name of jesus i lift them up and i pray that you will just come down upon them this night lord god that you will change their lives lord god that you will give them a supernatural strength to overcome the sin that they still have in their lives for for father god we know the thoughts that you think about us not thoughts of evil but thoughts of good to bring us all to an expected end We know that Ephesians 5.27 says that he, our King Jesus, is coming for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she should be holy and without blemish. Father, help each and every one of us practice righteousness. Place upon our hearts the ability to feel within our, with a, within our sanctified imagination, within our sanctified spirit-driven feelings, Lord God, within that which you have placed in each one of us when you breathe the spirit of, of, of your living soul into us uh, at, our, at, 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 at our birth, Father God, at, at our conception. Father, I pray that that will witness to every listener of this radio show, Lord God, in a powerful and mighty way, that you will reveal the things of their heart so that they can make those corrections. Father, because we know what your scripture says, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess if we can confess of our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That's a powerful promise, Father God. Your, our King Jesus, your Son, promised us. In Matthew 5, 6, blessed, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. 
Father, we praise your holy name. If you can help us, Lord God, hear your voice. If you can reveal to us anything that is incorrect, reveal and create within us a clean heart. Reveal to us, Father God, anything that we need to flush out. Father, burn off the sin. Burn off the things that are within us that need to go away. Create, Father God, in the name of Jesus, a clean heart within each and every one of us. One of us, please, Lord God, be left behind. Help us all understand, Lord God, the gifts that you have presented before us. Help us to be able to discern better the prophecies that are out there and know when it is you speaking. Help us to understand that, that you have promised us, Lord God, uh, through your servants, the prophets, that if, we, that if we lift up the lost in our prayer, if we pray consistently for the lost and our loved ones, that you will save them. Help us to understand that there are conditions that we are to be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word, sitting and listening uh, to the things that are being spoken uh, uh, um, from the pulpit, Father God, but, but, but also be out there talking, ministering, uh, being helps, Father God, uh, singing praises to you, Lord God, per performing intercessory prayers and standing in the gap for people, Father. Help us to set aside the time. And use it wisely to the benefit of the greater good of the kingdom in all that we do. Help us to achieve holiness. Help us to separate ourselves from society in every way that we can. Give us the strength to say no. Father God, we just lift you up and praise your holy name. We ask you for a powerful hedge of protection to come down upon each and every one of us. We ask you, Father God, that you will send your angels to take charge over us, Psalms 9111. Father, we ask you for that hedge of protection to surround round about each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. We ask you for a holy fire to surround each of us, to surround our children, to surround our cars, to surround our jobs. Father God, it says, your scripture says, that if we seek ye first the kingdom and your righteousness, and your righteousness, that all these other things will be given unto us. Help us to do that. For he who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous, 1 John 3, 7. And he who sins willfully and habitually is of the devil. For he who is born of God does not sin. He keeps himself. And the evil one does not touch him, 1 John 5, 8. We praise your holy name, Lord God. We thank you for your holy word. We praise you for placing the rhema word upon our hearts. Lord God, together, we lift you up. We magnify your holy name. In corporate prayer, we lift our hands before you and we praise you, Lord God, for you alone are worthy, for you alone are worthy. Glory and honor and power to you, Father God. We praise you. We praise you, for you inhabit the praises of your people. And Father God, we are your people. We lift up your country. We lift up your holy land, Lord God, and we lift up uh, your your protected holy land and your people, Father God. We pray that you will show yourself strong, Father, that you will show yourself strong and that, you, that the Abrahamic covenants will become a reality before the entire world as these events start to unfold. Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus that not one person misses this opportunity. Father, we lift up the state of Israel. We lift up your holy uh, land of uh, your holy city of Jerusalem. In Jeremiah it says it is the throne of God. It is the throne of the Lord. We lift it up and we ask for your divine protection. We lift it up and we, we, we ask for your divine and holy protection and holy fire and hedge of protection around your people. Lord God, show yourself strong like you did in the Six Day War. We pray that as these events start to unfold, as these, whole, as these blood moon tetrads which align with high holy days, Father God, begin to unfold soon. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that great things and powerful things and mighty things that can be only attributed to our glorious Father, the El Elyon, Yahweh El, our Father of lights, that only you, Father God, can be behind them so that we can lift you up and magnify your holy name before those who we witness to. In Jesus' name we pray that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen. I arise today 
through almighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through the belief of the threeness, through confession of oneness of the creation and the creator. I arise today through the strength of Christ's birth with his baptism, through the strength of his crucifixion with his burial, through the strength of his resurrection with his ascension, through the strength of his descent for the judgment of doom. I arise today through the strength of the love of the cherubim, in obedience of angels, in the ser service of archangels, in hope of resurrection to meet with reward, in prayers of patriarchs, in, pre in predictions of the prophets, in preaching of the apostles, in faith of confessors, in in innocence of holy virgins, in deed, in deeds of righteous men. I arise today through the strength of heaven, light of sun, radiance of moon, splendor of fire, speed of lightning, swiftness of wind, depth of sea, stability of earth, firmness of rock. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God might, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me, God's hand to guard me, God's way to lie before me, God's shield to protect me, God's host to save me from the snares of the devil, from the temptations of vices, from everyone who shall wish me ill afar and near, alone and in multitude. I summon today all these powers between me and those evils against every cruel, merciless power that may oppose my body and my soul, against the incantations of false prophets, against black laws of pa uh, pangdom, against false uh, laws of her heretics, against craft and idolatry, against spells of witches and smiths and wizards, and against every knowledge that corrupts man's body and soul. Christ has shield me today against poisons, against burning, against drowning, against wounding, so that there may come to me abundance of reward. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit up, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in the eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity through the belief of threeness, through the confessions of the oneness of the creator of creation. Author unknown, glory to Jesus. Kenneth? Hey, Johnny, it's such a blessing to be in his family, isn't it? To be a son of the Most High God through the spirit of adoption. Now, when you were praying, something struck me. And what that was was to just um, appeal to everybody. You were like Paul when he says, I beseech you, brethren. You know, that was something you said about, you know, getting out there to work, to co-labor, like Paul says, with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to save to save the lost. And if that's not in your heart right now, you ought to do an, a check. Now, if you're a new believer, you're going through a process of sanctification, and, and you know, if, if you stay on the path, and if you're sincere about this, that'll follow. But if you've been a believer for a while, and you don't have a burning desire to get out there and co-labor with the Lord to save the lost, you better do a, a spiritual checkup. That was powerful when you prayed that, brother. Amen. Yeah, praise Jesus. Um, and it's fascinating that you that you just said that, brother, because uh, Proverbs twenty twenty seven is a verse that the Lord showed me just uh, a couple of days ago. This is awesome. Twenty twenty seven. The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. See, in in the research that I've done over over all these years and years of time, um, particularly dealing with the alien, demon, fallen angel phenomenon. One of the things that you discover is you discover that these beings, it has to do with Daniel 2.43 and the whole onslaught of the human genome over thousands of years of time, amen, but, but they're after the Spirit of God. There's a power in that. As a matter of fact, when you listen to the testimony of Credo Mutua about the Chittahuri in Africa, these are these fallen seraphim, reptilian being things in Africa that are so pervasive there in the, in the depths of darkness and, and the witch doctors and things uh, of, the, of, of, of that pursuit and practice over in that part of the world. But anyway, uh, as he was speaking about the Chittahuri, he was saying that there is something, there is something inside of man that these beings are so utterly horrified and afraid of. 
It's the spirit. They want to get this spirit. They can they can soul scalp just like it says uh, in Ezekiel. I forget what verse that is. Hey, Kenneth Van Impey, can you find a soul scalping verse? <laughs> you hunt my people like birds and with your bands and I don't I forget how it goes. But anyway, um, uh, it's all about. Uh, but anyway, they can they can somehow they can take the soul mind energy from a human being and trans and and move it over into uh, uh, a fit extension or a human hybrid being creature thing. Uh, but they can't get their hands on the Spirit. That is the essence of God, which God breathed into us at our conception. And it's so important because it's that when you learn to trust, when you are walking, you know, you've got three dynamics that play, on, play upon you. And the number one thing that theologians, teachers, and pastors forget about is personal choice. So, when the Bible says something uh, to the effect of, for example, and I'll just pull this verse up, uh, Sparrow, I'm going to do an electronic search on Sparrow with a star in the New Testament, uh, so I can give you the actual verse. Okay, so in Matthew um, 10, verse 29, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your Father's will? So doesn't that imply that everything is, is within the will of the Father, right? Right, but there's a catch. Free will. Your free will is also the will of the Father. See? That changes everything. So we can, you know, you look at that verse, a lot of people would say, hey, wait a minute, that, that means that it was God's will that I backslid, or it was God's will that I did this bad thing. No, 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 no. No, it's within the Father's will that you have free choice. So there are three elements in play, always. There's the buffeting of the dark side and the demons. <clears throat> There's the Spirit of God, the angelic side, the forces of good, amen, praise Jesus, the angels which are given charge over us, the ministering angels that the Father gives to us for protection. All those play a role. And then there's personal choice. That's why Revelation 2 and 3 says over and over again, you must overcome. He who overcomes. He who overcomes. He who overcomes. That's why all of these action words are all over the New Testament telling us that we must be holy. That we must cleanse ourselves of all filthiness of flesh and spirit through the fear of God. I think it's uh, 2 Corinthians 7 1 or something like that. Praise God. I mean, th these are all action words. These are things that we are expected to do in order to be obedient to our Lord and our Savior. Not just our Savior, but our Lord. Praise God. And this spirit, this Proverbs twenty twenty seven, the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of the heart. See, when you realize that, what that means is if you, if you are in praise and worship and seeking the Lord in prayer and you are trying your best and you are doing everything you can to be right with the Lord, then you can start to trust your emotions. You can start to trust your inner spirit and the Lord will reveal through how you feel. When you feel guilty about something, I get emails, folks, all the time from people going, uh, you know, I'm, I'm starting to, like, you know, worry because I feel like maybe I should. I, do, John, do you think such and such is a sin? Folks, guess what? If you're typing that email, <laughs> you already know the answer because here it is, searching all the inner depths of the heart. That is the Lord speaking to us. Because when the devil has control over your thoughts, when you are living in an unrighteous state and in a sinner's state, in a lost person's state, that spirit is quelched. And, and it still exists in some, but it can get so dark in some people that they don't even hear the Spirit of God, their conscience speaking to them anymore. Praise Jesus. Kenneth? You there? Kenneth? Can you hear uh -oh. me? Oh, there he is. <laughs> okay. Proverbs 20:27. 20, it's an incredible verse. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. Yep. Now, what happens to a lamp in a foolish virgin's situation? It goes out because, like you said, it gets darker and darker and darker. In fact, I contend 
that until we're saved, that lamp is out. So when we get born again, the Lord reaches out from heaven, pours a little bit of Holy Spirit in us, and he lights it, and we see. Now, unless we walk in the Spirit, unless we continue to commune with the Father through this incredible gift, that lamp's going to go out. And like you said, it's going to get darker and darker and darker. So what we need to do is to stay in the Spirit. Remember we were talking to Ken? Uh, you were talking to Ken, and he, he tried to make the distinction between the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit's like the river. The Holy Ghost is like the lake. Well, we have this lamp in us, you know, and it needs to be fed by the river, you know, where the lake dries up, the lamp goes out. These are just all symbols or, or images to try to explain the supernatural thing that happens in us. But amen, brother, it's a powerful verse. I remember where I was when that thing came alive to me, and I woke Terry up. I was reading my Bible at 4.30 in the morning. And I said, you've got to look at this, Proverbs 20, 27. It's incredible. Oh, that's cool. Praise Jesus. I had no idea. That's awesome. Um, yes, and what you said also is underscored by the nuances, not one jot or tittle. Praise God. And if you're a literalist, not a not a you know a, a preteristic type of a person who tends to jump to the metaphor at the drop of a hat, but but your your exegesis is is heavily literal like ours is, then and you pl apply the not one jot or tittle principle to the to the scripture, it means that there's all kinds of hidden gems. Like Matthew twenty five five. So right there you you've got right there verse five it says But while the bridegroom was delayed Wow. So I think we're in a delay period. I'm not going to get into that too much because we don't have time. Acts five thirty two. And we are his witnesses to these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. I wonder what that implies to those who are disobedient. I wonder what the implication of that is. Praise God. All right, so we really want to get close. I, I love to talk about the Scripture. I love to talk about uh, uh, a lot of things. Uh, there's so, But there's folks, there are so many powerful headlines tonight. I want to try to hammer out as many of those as I possibly can and get into the Project Blue Beam stuff. The Lord put this upon my heart because I believe we are approaching the, the rapture very, very soon. And I think a lot of us know this. Now, the question is, how long is very, very soon? I've learned to grow to not so much like the word soon. <laughs> hey, Kenneth, do you like the word soon? I mean, is it like your favorite word or what? <laughs> it, it depends on what the meaning of the word soon is, John. Yeah, yeah. What the what the definition of the word is is right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Taken from an infamous president. Oh dear, <laughs> praise God. So um, yeah, the, and that one. Uh, uh, anyway, so anyway, so we're all kind of. Many of us are are really really super duper excited because never before I, in my life. In the years that we've been doing this radio show, we're probably approaching close to 300 shows at this point. There's over 420 articles published on Tribulation Now. Not, not a week goes by that somebody doesn't write me a letter or, or leave a comment going, Praise God, I found this website. Hallelujah. So praise Jesus. The Facebook page has been a total blessing, folks. If you haven't, if you don't know about the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Tribulation Now, one word, and you just ho hover your mouse cursor uh, over the, uh, um, the, the, the button in the middle of the page where it says, um, liked uh, and are under uh, I believe it's liked and you, and you say uh, get notifications on that link and it'll allow the the headlines and the apocalyptic stuff that we're posting on there bunches and bunches as a matter of fact folks I even go there for a lot of the headlines that we uh, put on you know talk about on the radio show praise Jesus so um, you know again that you've got that resource you've got tribulation now dot net the dot net net site that Brother Lee takes care of, which is one of the most Kenneth, isn't that one of the most amazing sites you've ever seen? <laughs> it's amazing. You know, brother, it is. It's powerful. He is such a talented man. God bless you, Brother Lee. You have an incredible gift from the Lord and it's so exciting to see you using it for kingdom work. Praise God. 
Oh, praise Jesus. And uh and uh Jimmy Buchanan's work, he calls he goes by the um uh like like I use a a a, a pen name Johnny Baptist uh is my is my pen name which I uh the Lord placed upon my heart to use back in 2009 to write the articles and um and similarly uh Jimmy uh he he he's absolutely anointed praise God for his work he goes by the pen name Jimmy Prophet and he's been doing uh behind the scenes a thankless thankless time consuming job putting up taking these radio shows praise Jesus for his work and um p- put and converting them into YouTube videos and we get people uh, when he falls behind we get people saying, where are the YouTube videos? Because everybody has, you know, some form of multimedia or something that they prefer. So again, folks, uh, uh, there, there's so many different resources that you can reach out to, and also you can email me at jbaptist777 at gmail.com if you want some of these uh, business cards to hand out. People don't like tracks, okay? We've been conditioned over decades and decades of time to not like tracks because of certain types of folks that have knocked on our doors over the years. So those trifold tracks that religious organizations have attempted to hand out historically have left behind a stigma. So when you try to hold out, hand out a tract, we're programmed to not want it. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. You can keep that. You can keep that. But business cards, <laughs> it's completely different. You would be amazed. I mean, look, I'm just some, you know, 52-year-old fat guy. <laughs> oh, and I'm I'm on a diet. I'm trying. I'm trying. Praise Jesus. But um, but you know, I I'm just nobody knows who I am when I go out in public, you know. And I pull out one of these cards, and people they they when I hold the card toward their hands or toward them, they reach for the card. Isn't that fascinating? Isn't that fascinating? And on the back. Hell is coming to the Earth, Planet X, Nibiru, me- Megaquakes, Martial Law, Nuclear War, FEMA camps, guillotines, UFOs, Fallen Angels, Anunnaki. The new cards now mention the Anunnaki because you can't watch pyramids. It says pyramids on it. Star gods. It, I added the word Anunnaki because you cannot watch one Ancient Aliens episode nowadays without them doing a spiel on the Anunnaki and the Sumerian texts wonder why that is. Kenneth, why do you think that is? <laughs> why is that? Because they're real, Johnny. They're real. Well, and yeah, in the Bible, and, and, if you're looking for them, Anna Kim. Yes. Anna Kim. And the strong delusion. Yeah, it's, uh, 2 Thessalonians 2.11b says, I, God, send a strong delusion so that they, the unrighteous, will believe the lie. And the lie is that they, the Sumerian gods, are our creators. The moral of the story is that – anyway, so if you want to get a hold of these business cards, um, they've been updated and uh, and people accept them. I've had, I have had ladies actually walk out from behind the counter at Walmart and come up and give me a hug. So uh, praise Jesus and all kinds of testimonies. So again, James one twenty two says, "Be ye doers of the word, not just hearers of the word, deceiving yourselves." So if you don't have a gift, if you're not playing, singing in the choir, uh, helps in your church. If you've been disconnected from from church life, and this is your church, praise Jesus, because this is an electronic ecclesia. Praise Jesus. We just sent out a humongous stack just today. I just sent. I went to the post office and sent a huge stack to Bosnia and Herzegovina. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so if you want, just email me at jbaptist777 at gmail.com. What a blessing. Mauritius, Kenneth. Mauritius, Chile. Uh, uh, oh, my gosh. All over the world. All over. New Zealand, Australia, Indonesia. Praise God. Uh, it's just awesome to be able to help people free of charge, uh, just you know, uh, to be able to get involved now so that none of us show up be- before Jesus with, with completely empty hands. Because, folks, that was me for for 30 40 years i went into churches and i sat there and i sung songs and then i went home and fell right back into sin and woke up the next week and repeated the same process wow that's kind of scary when you consider how powerful and important these things are to our eternal position in the kingdom of heaven praise jesus kenneth and that just makes lucifer so happy brother because he knows that when the saints are in that condition, if they're not if if they're not on the road to hell, they're of no effect for the kingdom. 
So, I mean, there's a line there, and I'm not going to be the one that defines it, but there's a line there, you know. And, uh, you know, Paul said it very well where he talked about godly sorrow versus worldly sorrow. So you got a lot of people, and they're doing exactly what you said, going every week, getting their – they're getting juiced up for Jesus. They get their liver shivers and crocodile tears, as I call it, and that's worldly sorrow, and that leads to death, whereas godly sorrow leads to repentance – that does not reverse, so to speak, or repent. And and it's just, we we got to be on that path. we got to be on that path with godly sorrow. And it takes a lot more than going to church every week, raising your hand for a half hour, listening to the feel-good moment with the preacher, and going home and getting back to sin. And that's not discipleship. That's not walking with Jesus. Oh, amen, and it's even bigger than that because there are sins of the heart. That's why Revelation 2 and 3 is so ominous of a warning to have six out of seven of the churches to be rebuked by Jesus and basically told that they're not going to make the rapture. That's pretty scary. It's all about your heart. That's why you have to pray Psalms 51 verse 10, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Praise Jesus. It's so important. And you've you got to beseech the Lord. Um, and folks, regarding the rewards, it's all totally scriptural. It's all over the Bible. 1 Corinthians 3.10 Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, and precious stone, uh, stones, that's the metaphors for the good, the good works of the kingdom, and then wood, hay, or straw, that's the not really profitable works of the kingdom, each wor- one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it. Because it is revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is, not how much, not what volume, but what sort. Did it come from the heart? Did it come out of love? First Corinthians twelve, first Corinthians twelve um sorry, first Corinthians twelve and first Corinthians thirteen. Very important, very important chapters. Verse fourteen If anyone's work which he has built upon endures, e.g. it results in being profitable for the kingdom, he will receive a reward. Verse 15, if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer a loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through the fire. Wow, that's powerful. Praise God. All right, so we got to... We got to move on rapidly through these headlines. Praise Jesus, and uh, boy, we have so many. There's so much going on right now, folks. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get out of here. Let's get off this alien, demon-infested rock. Normal. Wow. Praise Jesus. European Southern Observatory reports on a headline. It says, Media Advisory. Press conference will be held in Brazil to announce discovery in outer solar system. This is from the 25th of March. Wow. Uh, wow. Now, I don't know what this is. It's just yesterday. Um, but uh, what could it be? Kenneth, what do you think it could be? What, it, what is this discovery on the outer edge of the solar system that these renegades in Brazil are going to come forward with? And do you think anybody in the United States would pay attention? <laughs> could, you, could you say Nibiru? Uh, I don't know. X? Uh, could be. Everything we've been talking about. It's what, um, it's what um, Dr. Harrington wanted to go down and spend the rest of his career observing before he mysteriously died after retiring from the Naval Observatory. John, this thing's real. It's been out. We've done shows on this. In these countries, uh, Brazil is one of the BRIC nations. That includes Russia, India, China, and Brazil. They're kind of rogue in a sense because they're not in the good old boys club completely. Now, they're working on them. But these people have brains, too, and, and they have telescopes, and they have banks, and they have armies, and they're not going along with the program, brother. This is exciting. I know, isn't it? Praise God. Um, I, you know, and the funny thing about it is that when you really do, when, you, when you've done your homework regarding Planet X, Nibiru, whatever you want to call it, and I, I'm talking about seriously done your homework, not just read one book, but, you know, read several books maybe, several articles, um, you know, uh, hopefully studied a little bit of the ancient Sumerian text with a discerning heart, knowing that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and not fumbling the ball, 
<laughs> not not suffering from the Solomon problem and slipping up and apostatizing, praise Jesus. But you know, when you, when you can uh, look at all that data, wow! So it's a solar system, folks. It's not just a planet. It's a solar system. It's a binary star system. It's so simple. Most yellow dwarfs, go out and ch check up on me if you don't believe me. Just go out and search on Wikipedia. Search, uh, of, search on Google. Most yellow dwarf, that's what we have here, yellow dwarf star systems are binary. So it's not even scientifically unlikely that, that, that our system is binary. It's likely that it is. Praise Jesus. So pray, It's just so exciting. I don't know what they're going to reveal. It could be some kind of a planetary object. Who cares? At the end of the day, if it's any kind of a planetary object that they spotted, it's almost for sure at this point in the game, and the game of eternal life, I pray, at this point, it's got to be one of those you know rogue satellite moons or planets of Nibiru. Praise Jesus. That's what I'm thinking. But anyway, all the glory to God. And we know that the do a prophet, uh, well, I don't have time to cover all the prophecies, but Dr. O'Rour was shown a vision uh, that the Lord is going to reveal some kind of a planetary object. Praise God, uh, you know, um, to the world. It's going to be on CNN, Fox News, BBC, all over the place. It's going to be huge news. Praise Jesus. All right, let's hit some more of these headlines. Praise God. Unraveling the mysteries behind the megalithic stone walls of Sakaseya Waman. <laughs> Lying on the northern outskirts of the city of Cusco in Peru lies the walled complex of Sakaseyawaman. This site is famed for, for its remarkable large dry stone walls with boulders carefully cut to fit together without mortar. And it says many of them which weigh over 200 Tons. And then, Kenneth, how about that, that, that megalithic structure that they found with rocks in excess of 3,000 tons in Russia recently? Remember that article? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> John, they're all over the world. You know, we have the, uh, the Baalbek uh, platform or whatever you want to call it uh, in the, in the uh, where is that, the Grecian area. There's, of course, the Great Pyramids. We've got all of these different structures down in South America. And we've got all these crazy theories that they had sand mounds and they rolled them on logs. Try rolling a 200-pound rock on a log, let alone a 3,000-ton rock. John, we're not being told the truth. Yeah, well, you know what I find really exciting about, because I've had this theory, and it's just a theory, who knows, but I've had this theory, you know, based upon my research of the, quote, aliens, <laughs> um, uh, you know, that, 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 that this tech, you know, if they're going to put large uh, spacecraft on, on you know, uh, 6,000, or I guess they're about four or 5,000 year old Sumerian clay tablets from the land of Ur, where Job was, uh, that whole, uh, it's just, that's, everything happened in the land of Ur, well, a lot of stuff, a whole bunch of stuff. And, and folks, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people out there, um, you know, I, I think, it, th th look, how, there's a theory that's pr pretty prevalent whereby they say stuff like, oh, oh, well, the giants, you know, the Nephilim were the ones who moved these rocks around. Well, you know what, folks? The largest uh, skelet skeletal remains, arguably, that have ever been discovered, and Steve Quayle would be supposedly one of the experts on this subject, uh, is 30, about 30 feet tall. Okay, and how many – hey, Kenneth, how many – 30-foot-tall Nephilim would it take for, you know, to, to, to carve a 3,000-ton rock and move it into place? Yeah, you got the Ph.D., Kenneth. Let, let, tell us, how, how many 30-foot-tall Nephilim would it take? I'm ciphering here, Johnny. I'm ciphering. <laughs> Uh, you know what, Johnny? If you were to look at a 500-ton rock and just have mere mortals like you and me do it, not the Thors and the uh, you know and the Neptunes and all of those so-called demigods, but anyways, if you just had normal men like they have in the theories for the 500-ton rocks in the Great Pyramid, uh, you would probably need about the same many and all the crazy contraptions because a 30 foot tall nephilim 
which there's all sorts of evidence, like you said, and Steve Quell has it, couldn't do it any better than we could move a 500 ton, in my humble opinion. Right, I don't see it possible. I've always hypothesized. Now, this is a hypothesis, a postulation, a theory, whatever you want to call it. But if you go uh, to tribulation-now.org and you hover your mouse cur cursor in the black banner section at the very top over apocalyptic signs and you slide your mouse over alien, UFO, fallen angels link at the very top of the drop-down window, there's <laughs> pictures uh, from the Soho Space Telescopes and YouTube videos, and some of them show uh, 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 these spacecraft shooting laser beams. I think it, th that they're tractor beams. I think this stuff is real. I think it, I think it's not science fiction. It's science fact. I think we're going to find out. Look, there's and even NASA tried to come out and debunk it. As soon as they try to come out and debunk these things, you can almost believe with all your heart that that these things are real. They're tangible, uh, just like uh, Gary Stearman said. Well, in his little YouTube video where he's testifying on what happened to him in his airplane and his encounter with the UFO, he believes they're nuts and bolts. There's testimony, uh, some of them. I mean, look at look at the evidence is overwhelming. Uh, so I don't know. Some of them may be time machines. Some of them may materialize to interdimensionally. I don't really get it. But certainly, a bunch of giants. I don't think Nephilim could carve a 3,000 ton rock. Anyway, praise Jesus. It is exciting. I, I love these topics because it just makes the Bible come alive. Glory to God. All right, let's move on. Okay, this is sad. Death toll rises in Washington landslide. At least eight people have been killed in a huge landslide that buried cars. I know that number is higher. Kenneth, do you know what it's risen to? No, I, I don't. I know it's pretty tragic, John, and I know it's growing, but you know, our prayers ought to go out to that part of the country and all those families. We just want to be remembering them in our prayers. Absolutely. Amen. Here's another headline, and this is just the, the signs of the times, folks, and it's ramping up. It's ramping up to a crescendo like I've never seen before. Uh, uh, headline, Taiwan police move in on anti-China protests. Water cannons used on crowds surrounding Taipei cabinet headquarters in protest against the trade pact with China. Okay, so now you've got uh, uh, significant uh, anti-Chinese protests that are happening. Um, there are also protests, I understand, sizable noteworthy protests that are happening in China. Look, here's another one. Ebola alert grips Guinea and Sierra Leone. Highly contagious virus kills 15... And that's an understatement, folks. The Ebola is absolutely horrific. And many believe that it was, in fact, laboratory created as a bioweapon, just like was depicted in the movie Outbreak. Kenneth, do you think sometimes they put stuff in the Hollywood movies that, you know, is like really real, but, you know, to like front load us a little bit? Yeah, it's exactly what it's called. It's uh, lesser magic, John, front loading. These demoniacs, <laughs> these uh, sons of Lucifer, these uh, whatever you want to call them, they, um, they have this crazy code of ethics. And ethics is not the same as morality, so don't confuse the two. They have this code of ethics that if they do it by their rule book, they're okay. So they, they like you said, they front load these things. They get it out into the meme, that's the collective consciousness in the culture. And then when you hear about it and it's reported, oh, yeah, that's okay, I saw that in a movie. And you can't separate reality from fiction. And it's happening in so many areas, from banking to these these quote-unquote conspiracy theories to so many other things. I mean, they've, they've done some pretty incredible movies outing what's happening in the banking system. John, it's, it's, it's there, and then the average Joe, he just goes on with life because he saw it in the movies. I don't know, Kenneth. I think you might be one of them there conspiracy nuts. The limits of debate yeah. in this country are established before the debate even begins, and everyone else is marginalized. They're made to seem either to be communist or was some sort of disloyal person, a kook, there's a word, and now it's conspiracy. See, they've made that something that should not be even entertained for a minute, that powerful people might get together and have a plan. Doesn't happen. You're a kook. You're a conspiracy buff. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't.
I'm a bag of nuts. I'm a walking payday bar. Praise Jesus. <laughs> uh, and I and I actually grew up only a couple of miles from the Hershey Chocolate Factory. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, this is awesome. All right, here's another one. Brazilians clash on the 50th anniversary of coup. So there are Brazilian uh, protests that are taking place. Fights outbreak in Rio as demonstrators mark military takeover, claiming current president is leading country to ruin. Another one. Anti-austerity protesters march in Spain. Thousands of protest Folks, <laughs> you should see this photograph. This is like, just looking at this photograph of all the people that are protesting in Spain... It makes the Obama inauguration crowd look like a couple of little old ladies sitting on a park bench. <laughs> Thousands of protesters from across Spain called for an end to austerity measures amidst the country's economic crisis. Folks, this is absolutely worldwide right now. Venezuelan protests claim more lives. Three killed in demonstrations, raising total to at least 30. And thousands continue to march against President Maduro. And, uh, listen to this. North Korea fires more Short-range rockets. We know what's going to happen with North Korea. Praise Jesus. That is the, Many people believe that that's the tipping point. That's the event that turns World War III on like a switch. At least 16 unguided Soviet-era missiles that Pyongyang has had since the 1960s were fired into the sea off the East Coast. Kenneth, you think they got better missiles for the real show? Their hey, hey, idea of, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they shoot them out into the ocean. That's like when I was a kid and I got my first gun. I'd go out with my twenty two and I'd just take a brick of twenty twos and just shoot them at anything. And I was like a really big dude because I had my little twenty two. I mean, shooting them into the ocean? Give me a break, brother. No, they're flexing. They're, they're, you know what they're doing? They're just practicing. I think they're testing their missile launching systems and their, uh, and their uh, back-end computer systems as much as they possibly can because that's really critical. You know, when they launched the attack that was shown to the prophet Dr. David O'Rourke uh, on South Korea and against the United States Navy sinking a ship, uh, wow. Uh, uh, you know, they got to practice. It's it's all part of the drill. Um, praise Jesus. Here's another uh, headline from uh, March 21st. More sinkholes keep popping up across the United States. Massive sinkhole opens up on South 14th Street in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, right down the road from where I grew up. Uh, fire uh, engine gets stuck in an eight-foot uh, deep sinkhole in Indianapolis. Road closed by a sinkhole at intersection of uh, cent uh, Central Toledo. A sinkhole shuts down several roads through Valley Forge, National Historic District. Philadelphia, a large sinkhole growing on Ale Alexandrian Street. A Detroit cemetery sinkhole concerns neighbors in Allentown, Pencil in Allentown, Philadelphia, and man rescued from a sinkhole in Apollo Beach and Tampa. Wow. I mean, it just keeps going on and on and on. I mean, could that have something? Kenneth, do you think that could have something to do with that thing that the Brazilian guys are going to announce? Do you think there might be a connection hey, there? If the, I don't know. If the American Seems public, like, if the American public knew, John, they w there would be pandemonium in the streets. Remember that, um, oh, I forget his name. He was mapping the bomber routes over the North Pole. He reported this to the Pentagon, that there was a shift happening between the North Pole and the Magnetic North. And, and you know, they had to redo the, the, uh, the runways in Tampa. And this stuff yep. is happening, and the Pentagon decided. They made, a, they, they made an executive decision. If we were to disclose this to the public, we would have a collapse in society. So all these things are happening, and we're being told, oh, it's a water main break. <laughs> no. <laughs> Did you see some of these sinkholes, John? Did you see some of them? They, 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 were, they, were building, they were building that thing over uh, just across the ways from me down here. I think it hit national news where the the guy's inside the hole and he's uh, digging stuff out, and all of a sudden the ground underneath him sinks down. He gets trapped in water, starts filling the hole up. The guy's freaking out. The foreman of the construction site is like calling 911 going, this is a real emergency. This is life-threatening. He's like telling him, you better hurry. This guy's about to die. And, uh, oh, my gosh, it's just unbelievable the stuff that's going on. It is so totally worldwide. And that, that what I just read, now it's just the United States. See, this is all over. This is all over the Bible. It's all about the sixth seal. It's all about. It's all over the Bible. Isaiah twenty-four. Praise God. And Jeremiah fifty-one. Wow, you should read that one real slow in the early morning in the dark. <laughs> well, if you have a 
computerized Bible. Otherwise, you'd be squinting really hard to see it. Praise Jesus. Anyway, uh, United States heading for a total financial collapse. This is a headline. System, uh, systemic failure and apocalyptic demise. Federal uh, Reserve stress test sees a $501 billion loss at its biggest banks. Kenneth? your favorite topic <laughs> hey, it's it's irreversible joan it's a ponzi scheme to begin with there hasn't been a single fiat money system in the history of the world that has not collapsed and we've got the granddaddy of them all with the federal reserve it's by design john they believe they're going to usher in the new world order their brotherhood of man the fatherhood of god no mention of jesus though so they're going to get religious on us they're going to get sentimental on us but there's no mention of jesus and we're all going to get together hold our hands and sing kumbaya and you know what just line up to take your mark line up to oh you don't want that well there's the guillotines over there you know john this stuff is happening, and the the dollar the dollar is hopeless right now. It will collapse. It'll be the third seal, and we're just waiting for it. Oh, amen. As a matter of fact, uh, Brother Ma- Ma- Maurice Sklar, uh, right after our radio show went uh, the very next day on to um, Augusto Perez's radio show, Praise Jesus, and and put out. He published on his website at mauricesklar.com, I think it is, uh, a- a- and you can also find him by typing him M A U R I C E S K A L A R. Maurice Sklar uh, into Facebook, and it'll all, you'll see it there too. Uh, but he's come out with 21 things that are gonna that the Lord placed upon his heart. 21 things, and guess what? Every single one of the things that the Lord placed upon his heart that is going to happen on this earth. We already talk. We talk about on this show almost every single show. Praise Jesus. So many people don't even realize that a lot of these things are already happening across the world. The scrolls are already rolling out, folks. Praise Jesus. I so powerfully, powerfully believe with all of my heart that we're dealing with a pre-wrath rapture. And what, what's kind of – why is it? Why does this matter? It matters because the people who believe that they're not going to be here for any of the hard times are going to be horrified. And I don't want anyone to be horrified. It's better for us to be prepared, um, you know, instead of absolutely stupefied and astonished at the things that we're about to see come upon us. Praise Jesus. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, oh, listen to this headline. Freak storm destroys winter crops in India. 37 farmers commit suicide. Oh, 37 farmers commit suicide over badly damaged crops. 1.6 million hectares. Hectares or hectares of land destroyed. It's a national calamity. This happened in India. Praise Jesus! This is unbelievable. It's out of control. Um, uh, oh, oh! Hear this. This is a release from Russia today. Listen to this report. Stunning fakery in the alleged chemical weapons attack, according to a former UK ambassador. Coming up. The British Broadcasting Corporation is accused of staging chemical weapons attack. The CIA admits planting CNN reporters. And international lawyers call for journalists inciting violence to be expelled. August 2013, NATO leaders can't get the public on side for the imminent bombing of Syria. Suddenly, the BBC says it was filming a small rural hospital and a game-changing atrocity happens right there, the moment they were filming. We were filming the doctors working at this hospital when victims of an incendiary bomb attack on a school playground started pouring in. Absolute chaos and carnage here. It must be some sort of napalm. But the highly skeptical public stayed hostile to military intervention. Exactly one month later, the leaders are trying to pin a chemical weapons attack on Syria without success. The BBC airs exactly the same footage but digitally alters the word napalm for, quote, chemical weapons, hoping no one will notice. Absolute chaos and carnage here. It must be some sort of chemical weapon. Not only did folks notice, but it's unleashed a massive public investigation, which made some extremely disturbing findings. This is the total fabrication. From beginning to end of an atrocity with BBC reporter Ian Pannell standing amidst a tableau of very bad actors. It's just wrong! Wrong! This is disturbing! 
and folks, go to go to go to youtube.com and type in fake CNN golf war reporting. Quote, fake CNN golf war reporting. And what you see will absolutely destroy your worldview. <laughs> If you haven't seen it already, oh, the movie Wag the Dog. Hey, Kenneth, hey, it's that lesser magic thing, the movie Wag the Dog, huh? Yeah, it sounds like that. That report sounded like a, uh, a, a an instruction sheet right out of the playbook for the Tavistock Institute. Uh, they came out with this back, was it World War II, John? Tavistock came out with um, media methods to change public opinion within, I think it's two weeks. So if they have to advance an agenda for the globalists, they can start to hammer the public with all of these news pieces. And CNN and Fox, they all do it here. And Tavistock's the one that developed it. And it sounds like the BBC's, uh, BBC's reading right out of the Tavistock playbook. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Praise God. Folks, again, we're supposed to be wise as serpents. Jesus said, be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. Sounds like instruction. It sounds like admonishment. It sounds like a commandment of a uh, you know when Jesus says something like that. You know, wouldn't you want to do that? We're not supposed to be gullible, right? Well, this is Babylon the Great. I'm sorry if it breaks your heart, but it is what it is. And it, and it, look, no one. I don't think there's anybody that cries more than me. I ball so much. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And it is absolutely emotionally, it, it's unbelievable. It's I can't put into words how much I cry. I cry. It's devastating. If I, if I had a normal job where I had to go into the workplace, I don't even know if I could function normally because I am too in tune with the deception that's going on in this world, and I know what's coming down upon Babylon the Great. And it isn't, at this point, folks, it's not something you're going to pray away. The Lord, it's, it's not about patriotism. The only thing we should be praying for is that the Father's will be done, and His will is that the lost across the entire world are saved. It has nothing to do with your nationality at all. Praise Jesus. All right, hallelujah. Nothing nothing gets me all flustered more than watching somebody go, we have to pray for America. No, 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 no. That is not what the Bible says. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, now, for those of you who are still on the fence about Obama being the, you know, Mac Daddy Antichrist, because he is, I believe with all my heart, because my mom told me from a vision that was given to her back in 1972, what are the odds that she would tell me he'd be a mulatto man almost exactly my age? What are the odds? Got to be one in like 50 quadrillion, right? I'm sure he is. And then another prophet in our town who was part of our Bible teaching that we did, Brother David Ebal, was shown a powerful vision of evidently a similar looking man wearing a blue turban. And what's Obama's religious persuasion, ultimately? Islam. He is. But, just in case you still question it, and you've got to, you know, focus on the shapeshifters and, and the Windsor Castle as your primary candidate, which I find to be highly unlikely at this point. Praise Jesus. All right? Look at this. This is about the Torah portion. A Torah portion is a section that is historically read. What, the way it works is evidently, I don't know much about this, but the synagogues all across the world, the Jewish synagogues all across the world, read certain portions of the Torah at specific times in synchronicity. Well, it turns out that the Torah portion that was being read on exactly the same moment in time of Obama's inauguration was very, very telling. There's a, um, in, in Ecclesiastes 1.9, okay, Ecclesiastes 1.9 is a dead giveaway. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. 
See, this is what a shadow is in the Bible. You hear uh, the theologians and everything talking about, you know, um, uh, you know, well, types and shadows, types and shadows, shadows. A shadow is when something foreshadows what's going to happen in the future. Right? Three days of darkness coming upon us in Revelation 6, verse 13, when the sun turns black as sackcloth of hair. Right? Well, why do you know it's three days? Well, because what, how many days was it dark in, in, during the judgments upon Egypt? See, that's a shadow of things to come. Praise God. All right, and then you have the prophecies to confirm it. Well, all right, so this is a type of shadow. Let's listen to this. This is Perry Stone interviewing a man by the name of Bill Cloud. But here's, here's the thing. We see these things going on in our day and time. Now, the Torah portion... And maybe I should explain very quickly what a Torah portion is. The, the Torah, the five books of Moses, is divided up into these portions where in synagogues, every synagogue is reading the same portion as all over the world, and everybody's literally on the same page. And so we have these Torah portions from week to week. The Torah portion that is called Shmot, or names, begins in Exodus 1, verse 1, and goes through Exodus 3. Of course, this would contain... The, the story of how this new king arose over Egypt who didn't know Joseph, how he dealt treacherously, how he oppressed them, etc. That Torah portion, this year, we began to read on January 16th, 2009, Friday night, January 16th, and would have read it through the following Friday night, that is January 23rd of 2009. That means this, that on January 20th of 2009, the Torah portion that was being read in synagogues all over the world, included this verse that said, And there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph, and who said to his people, The children of Israel have become more and mightier than we. Come and let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and in the event of war side with our enemies, and so go up out of the land. And then he begins to institute these policies that are intended to bring the Hebrews, that is, God's people, those who have crossed over, going back to an earlier program. He began to institute these policies that are to bring God's people under his subjection. He has no regard for Joseph. He has no regard for the policies of Joseph that brought Egypt to this place, the most powerful nation then on earth. And so he wants to subject God's people, and he does it shrewdly. And by the time the majority of the people have figured out what's going on, it's too late. <laughs> what you're saying, I've got to make sure people get this. <laughs> when the inauguration took place, the Torah portion of Scripture being read by right. Jews is a new king arose in Egypt that knew not Joseph. Exactly. Kenneth? Johnny. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. Awesome? That's so that's awesome. amazing. That I didn't so hear awesome. that till just now. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. To me, that is our Heavenly Father signaling us, his righteous holy saints, that Obama is the Mac Daddy Antichrist. Never mind the thousands of other you know, things that are just like, hello, uh, praise Jesus. A treacherous new king arose over Egypt. <laughs> so that makes me wonder, could the inaugural address of Obama have been the covenant with many? Of Daniel 9.27? Wow. And folks, there's a lot of people, and you might be like, well, the, the mathematics doesn't add up, because when you take 1,260 days from, October, you know, from uh, January the 9th of 2000, and, and you add it up, it doesn't come out right. Well, that's why I have this hypothesis that, because when, when you do the math this way, it comes out right. See? So you take the inaugural address, the covenant, you know, and assume that it's a covenant with many, you do the math, it comes up to March the 12th, which a lot of supernatural and amazing things happen on March the 12th of 2013. I believe that's the right date, or I don't know, I've got to go back and do my math again. But anyway, uh, here's the point. When you take the 1260 days from that date, and there's a couple of possible dates, all right, and then you add 1,335 days. Because in Daniel 12, there's a standalone verse that's a mystery, and nobody knows what it means. So it's all by itself, and everybody thinks it's connected to Daniel, uh, Daniel 12, 11. But it's Daniel 12, 12. I don't think there's any connection, relationship mathematically whatsoever between Daniel 12, verse 11, 
and Daniel 12.12. I think Daniel 12.12 stands alone because it says simply, out of the clear blue, blessed are, are, are they who make it to the 1,335 day mark. When you take 1,335 days and you add it on to the end of the first 3.5 years, 1,260 days of Daniel's first half of the 70th week, you come to basically the middle of 2016 as the possible time of Jacob's trouble. And Jacob's trouble is not referring to the tribulation period because there is no tribulation period. It's the beginning of sorrows. It's the sorrows period. It's the period of the seals, which is what we're in right now. There is no tribulation period defined in the Bible. It's just the first half of Daniel's 70th week. Praise God. That's why the church of Thyatira in Revelation 2 is cast into great tribulation she's not cast into tribulation period she's cast into the great tribulation glory to Jesus so I don't know but it's very very exciting and all these indicators are just oh my gosh they're just folks and the last oh man I could just oh anyway all right so if that's not enough (laughs) listen to this saying number one threat is a nuke going off in New York. We have the CBS News article that came out hours after we broke the story with Senator Lindsey Graham saying that if we don't attack Iran, remember back during the whole Syria thing three months ago, that nukes would go off in New York uh, or in the Carolinas, Charleston to be specific. Senator Graham warns of nuke strike after missing warheads report. Senator warns South Carolina is nuclear bomb target following InfoWars report on black ops nuke transfer. There's CBS News. Graham, nukes in hands of terrorists could result in bomb coming to Charleston Harbor. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, the big move, the coup d'etat in this country, the number one weapon they've got is a nuke going off. That has been jacketed in an isotope to fingerprint it to a foreign power. You blackmail the foreign power you want to attack, just like they did Iraq with 9-11, when it was out of Saudi Arabia, clearly, undoubtedly. And you go after whoever you want. And they've just kicked Russia out of the G8. That is a big deal. I told you last year that my spidey sense was off the chart. And now this year, it's beyond off the chart. But you don't need spidey sense, ladies and gentlemen, to know This is serious. And all I want is prosperity. All I want is due process. All I want is a future. I don't want the globalists who are hell-bent to get our guns, break this country, and turn us into their military arm completely, and to finally capture the U.S. The globalists just don't want to capture Russia. They've already got the U.S. partially captured. But they want it fully captured. They want to secure their rear guard homeland. And the globalists want to punish their political enemies, and they're training the military and the police secretly. But we've blown it wide open, so now it's public, to take us on. That's treason. George Soros is financing banning guns here. He's financing attacking Russia over there. Bill Clinton's pushing attacking Russia over there, pushing taking our guns and our kids here. MSNBC's pushing attack in Russia over there. They're pushing taking our kids and our guns here. They sow division. They sow racism. They sow control. Look at them. Turn them on. It's an enemy globalist banker propaganda channel like Dilligan Radigan told you. And I'm sitting here saying all this. I can't believe I'm saying it. It's totally true. It's totally public. And I wish it was a lie. I wish it wasn't this crazy. Here's the Department of Homeland Security. I'll show you a document again, Shop. Federal Emergency Management Agency National Exercise Program, Capstone Exercise 2014 Scenario Ground Truth. Cyber attacks are expected throughout the exercise by members of anti-government organizations, such as Free Americans Against Socialist Tyranny, and individuals sympathetic to their cause. And then it goes on for page after page how they're going to take on the people that are against the tyranny. During martial law. It uses the words martial law in here. This is what they train for. Martial law. And who do they go after? The people that are aware of their operation. 
I mean, we're living in a V for Vendetta movie, ladies and gentlemen. But it's not a movie. Let's go to the Lord and Savior, and he will be our Lord and Savior when the nuke goes off. It'll turn him into Kim Jong-un. He will be our Savior when the nuke goes off. And I just can't believe it. Uh, the, the fact that they're pushing all this right now means they're seriously thinking about either letting somebody do it or doing it themselves. And it's so easy with a nuke because you can only use a very small number of people who, of course, are gotten rid of later. Let's go ahead and go to that uh, tape. Okay. And so my response then uh, continues to be uh, what I believe today, which is Gosh. Russia's actions are a problem. They don't pose the number one national security threat to the United States. Uh, I continue to be much more concerned when it comes to our security with the prospect of uh, a nuclear weapon going off in Manhattan, which is part of the reason why uh, the United States, showing its continued international leadership, uh, has organized uh, a forum over the last several years that's been able to help eliminate uh, that threat in a consistent way. All right, way. so they're at The Hague, the seat of global governance, global government, and they're announcing the new move against Russia and the American patriots. It's not that Russia's perfect, it's not the American patriots are perfect. It's just that we are not part of the new world order. Wow, praise God, thank you, Jesus. And don't forget, Maurice Sklar's updated uh, information that he felt the Lord placed upon his heart included a confirmation that Iran, that Israel is going to attack Iran any moment now, which matches Bill O'Reilly and the whole, oh my gosh, it snaps together like a perfect, unbelievable puzzle. Proverbs 21.1. The king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, he turns it wherever he wishes. Praise you, Father God. Glory to you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Kenneth? It is freaky, John. I mean, he was playing clips uh, in that little segment you just just played that uh, blew my mind. You know, for Obama to say his biggest concern is a nuke going off in Manhattan, and he's not concerned about Russia. Wow. You know, there there was so much packed in there. I, I, we could spend the rest of the show just talking on that one clip, John. I don't even know, know. where you'd start. I almost did that. I promised so many people we do the Project Blue Beam. You know, I mentioned it on the prior show and everything, and the Lord led me. But, um, you know, I, 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 there, you're right. There is so much going on right now that we could dedicate, and maybe we will. Maybe we'll do, maybe we'll do a recap, an apocalyptic potpourri World War III recap of all this stuff uh, this coming Sunday. I think that'd probably be appropriate because it is just there's so much of it. Also, um, I think I might have neglected to mention when I was talking about adding the 1335 of Daniel 1212 12 to the first 1260 days for those of you who are, Dan, are Daniel uh, uh, Daniel 927. Uh, uh, Daniel's 70th week fans out there, okay? Uh, I forgot to mention, for the math to work out, you have to find the, the covenant with many point, which would be in Obama speech. You add the 1260 days. Then you add the 1335 from that date moving forward. So you can go to timeanddate.com and use that, that calculator to do that. Now you might say, well, why would that be scriptural? Well, because Matthew 25, 5, Jesus said, while the bridegroom was delayed. Hint. It's a hint. Praise God. I think we're in that delay right now. Praise Jesus. All right, so that's really exciting. And then I've had, I had another person email me, but John, but John, the animal sacrifice, the animal sacrifice hasn't happened. The sacrifice in the temple, the sacrifice in the temple. Folks, Daniel 9.27, I believe, has been absolutely misinterpreted, unbelievably so. First off, there isn't going to be a temple, because Jesus said, an adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there will be no sign. And then he goes into the thing about the sign of Jonah, et cetera, et cetera. There's not going to be a sign. When he, when he says the only people that are going to be looking for a sign are the believers, and the believers are looking for the third Solomon's temple. And Jesus said there isn't going to be a sign. So there ain't going to be no third Solomon's temple. Praise God. So you're like, well, what about the animal sacrifice? That, what it says is that in one location it says daily sacrifice. But in the other location, the word sacrifice is actually not even there. It's a 9999 in the Strong's. It's injected as an assumption. Now, if you look at the word sacrifice, the, the meaning of it could just as easily b indicate the, the persecution of God's people. 
the daily persecution of God's people. And you're like, well, what are you talking about? Well, it's, it's, it's in the Bible. Okay, so if you go to Daniel 9.27... All right, praise Jesus. I'll just show this to you real quick for those who are really, because people who are into this stuff are really passionate about the stuff in Daniel 9.27. But it says, it says, um, then he, that's the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, that's the last seven years, okay? But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And everybody thinks that that's going to be, and it is the moment of the beginning of the Great Tribulation. The middle of that seven-year period is the beginning of the Great Tribulation, all right, where it says, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. Well, you know what's really fascinating? Is when you look at the Greek, or the Hebrew, all right, of Daniel 9.27, basically it says, and I'm not going to read the Hebrew because I just destroy it, but uh, the word sacrifice for one thing, it says oblation and sacrifice. Now, when you look at the word sacrifice, which is Old Testament Strong's 2077, the word is zebach. And what it says is a slaughter, a sacrifice of a victim or the act thereof. It, it uses the flesh of an animal. It says, i.e., that is. So it uses that as an example. But it by no means does Zebach refer to an animal sacrifice. If somebody tried to sacrifice an animal uh, anywhere, PETA would be all over them. Uh, CNN would have a special news report on it. They put people in jail for throwing rocks at cats nowadays in a lot of places. I mean, folks, I, not, that, not that I don't think they should, but anyway, praise Jesus, I'm just saying, if you look at the word s sacrifice, it could very well be referring to the slaughter of God's saints that is taking place across this world right now. See, if you bring an end to the zebach, the slaughter, you do so by rapturing them off the earth. And the rapture is going to happen just prior to the Great Tribulation. That's why the Church of Thyatira in Revelation 2 is cast into the Great Tribulation. It actually says the word Great Tribulation. So I maintain, <laughs> praise God, that the sacrifice it, that, that is mentioned in Daniel 9.27 is actually a reference to the rapture of the persecuted saints. Praise Jesus. Um, anyway, oh, 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 this is amazing. World Net Daily comes out, Blackhawks flying around my condo. I kid you not. Listen to this. My condo. Wow, that was sick. South Florida is not under attack, says the Broward Sheriff's Office. The U.S. Department of Defense will be conducting routine training through Thursday in Broward County. It all started last night around 8 p.m. when a low-flying aircraft was heard in downtown Fort Lauderdale. A few residents took video of the stealthy training and posted it to YouTube. However, since it was at night, you could... All right, enough of that. Praise Jesus. And then, uh, please forgive the bad word um, that's in here, folks, um, but you got to hear this audio clip. This is from just a little over a year ago. This is a guy filming Black Hawk helicopters uh, uh, actually doing like 50 cal strafing runs and practicing, I guess, with blanks uh, in Miami. Listen to this. All right, praise Jesus. All right, so um, uh, anyway, uh, very troubling. So, folks, I mean, this is just, we're on the edge right now. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And Kenneth, Kenneth, I I don't know what's going on up there at the Kenneth Beer, you know, the beer compound there, <laughs> praise God, uh, up there in, uh, you know, uh, the, the Great White North. But I got another audio clip here from the, you know, that top secret Homeland Security, Department of Homeland Security whistleblower that also works for the NSA. We got an audio snippet here, uh, uh, evidently, of, of some audio that, that they took from your, your compound up there in the woods in uh, uh, northwestern Pennsylvania. Listen to this. Oh, boy, busted right on. 
right on. Right on. Right on. Right on. Kenneth, your chickens did not sound real happy about those Black Hawk choppers. Oh, they're busted. They've been flying recon missions. They want to try to start bringing some data to the show, so they're going out in groups of two, and they don't have flight clearance, brother. That's what's going on. What? (laughs) Oh, praise God, that is so funny. Um, (laughs) so, uh, So anyway... Um, I have this. I mean, folks, this is all over Florida. This is all over Florida. Okay, I cannot tell you how often I'm sitting in my house and there's this sound, and I'm like, "What the? Hey, Kenneth! Kenneth, they got a spotlight on my house!" <laughs> Praise Jesus. Yeah, it's, I mean, I hear, they don't put a spotlight on my house, folks, but they cruise around over the top of my house. It's unbelievable. Praise God, it's exciting. And then um, prophecy about a Malaysian plane and the Israel, in Israel-Iran war. Evidently, a pastor, some pastor, I'm not clear on the names and the numbers and all that kind of stuff, but anyway, some pastor in Africa, this is relatively well known, uh, Paul Bagley covered this and so did other sites, that a pastor in Africa a ways back prophesied that when planes start to disappear, Israel will go to war with Iran. Listen to this. I had a vision, I think Perry did share this with you all, that planes started disappearing. And that when planes would start disappearing, it would be a sign that Israel and Iran are about to go to war. And um, there's just some very interesting things, and a lot of you that have been following the news know about the plane that flew out of um, Malaysia that just disappeared. And that prophet from, and and now I think even Charisma released an article about this man. Here's the interesting thing, though. We were in the back in the in the green room before we went on to do the broadcast this past Tuesday, and we told Pastor Shane Warren what had happened. And many of you that know who Pastor Shane is, he has an undeniable call to the nation of America. The guy gets open visions, and everything that he's ever told me for the nation has come to pass just the way that he told me. And luckily I have a, a great relationship with him and have seen the credibility of the words that God has given to him. And uh, so we're sharing this about this African minister that's sharing this vision, and Pastor Shane's jaw drops to the floor. And he said, I just had a minister, a a minister from Africa, come to my church. And he's in West Monroe, Louisiana. This happened in Houston. He said, just a few weeks ago, I had an African minister come to my office and share the same thing. Come to find out it was the same guy. Wow. (laughs) Kenneth? That's a pretty intense prophecy, brother. That was uh, cool. Um, who was that guy? Uh, he mentioned the names of the people, the sh- this Shane fellow. I-, I don't know. That was the thing that I was having. i got to do some more research on it. I just didn't have time. That is, that's something else. Wow. I know. I know. Planes falling from the sky, and then right afterwards, evidently, Israel attacks Iran, which matches what O'Reilly said, which matches what Marie Sklar updated his Facebook page with. Praise God. Look, it, folks, it is so, which matches. So consider this. There's this concept known as retaliation in kind, and we're going into the we're going into the uh, Project Bluebeam fake rapture deception of Lucifer part of the show here in just a second. Praise Jesus! But a little bit of critical thinking. Let's consider this: Is this sanctified critical thinking? I don't know. Does anybody out there know what retaliation in kind means? Right? Let's see if anybody out there knows what retaliation in kind means. All right, praise God, the kids know. They're smart. 
We got smart kids listening to the show, don't we, Kenneth? And a whole bunch of other people too, right? Yeah, yeah. John, Johnny, <laughs> kids know because like here's what retaliation in kind means. If a kid spits on you, the, ki- the other kid spits back on him. If a kid takes his uh, gets his lunch taken from him and a kid stomps on it, the other kid will try to take his lunch and stomp on it. That's called retaliation in kind. Right, like when you're watching, you know, uh, uh, the Three Stooges. You know, when Curly goes, whoop, 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 and he snaps somebody, and, you know, they poke you. But you don't kill somebody for stealing your lunch, you know? All right, praise God. So retaliation in kind is applied to the, you know, to the practices of uh, stuff, war stuff. Um, for example, when Gaza launches a bunch of rockets into Israel, the, the, the concept is that you don't go in and drop a nuke on Gaza, right? I mean, already Israel is taking an unfair beating uh, for even doing what they have been forced to do by the relentless attacks coming out of Gaza. Now, That's what retaliation in kind is. Now, if the prophet Dr. David O'Rourke's mighty vision from Jehovah God, as he puts it, comes true, he saw two missiles, as he says, uh, being launched. Nuclear, he said, nuclear missiles being launched from a jet into a mountain and this humongous eruption of fire, which would be the Fordow facility at the base of the mountain of the Fordow facility in Iran. At that point, if that is true, and Israel Israel does use two tactical nukes, and there is evidence, folks, there were six Israeli Mossad agents uh, 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 um, arrested in Staten Island the day that the, uh, that the 9-11 occurred. When those buildings were brought down. Because they were jumping for joy. They were like, yay, because the buildings were coming down. Somebody called the police and arrested them. And then they let them go because they were Israeli Mossad. The CIA, the Mossad, the KGB, the MI6, they're all part of the black ops. They're all part of the dark. Doesn't it, 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 Every country has some portion of its... It's just very dark out there. The puppet government, the shadow government, call it what you will. Now, retaliation in kind... If Israel shoots two tactical nukes into the base of the Fordow facility in that mountain, guess what? The bar is now raised. Retaliation in kind takes on a whole new meaning. Once the the nuclear Pandora's box is opened by the West, it now allows those who oppose the West to, in theory, ethically, retaliate in kind. Are you seeing what we're talking about? (laughs) <laughs> Obama tells the world that he's concerned at the G7 no less praise Jesus he's concerned about a nuke in New York what does he have a crystal ball no he's in on it he's in on it that's why Pastor T.D. Hill and his vision from the Lord and his dream slash vision from the Lord back in December 11th of 20, 2011, December, I'm sorry, December 21st of 2011, I believe. Yes. Obama was in the White House. He shot the American Eagle in, in this dream, standing on the Truman balcony of the White House at the time the United States was destroyed. See, it's all connected together. Obama knows. He's in on it. Praise Jesus. So it's very, very exciting. So it all fits together like a glove. Praise Jesus. It's very, very exciting. All right. So anyway, oh, and Kenneth, I'd like to get you to comment on that. It's alarming, John, because it does fit together so well. I mean, think about Obama's comment, concerned about a nuke going off in Manhattan. Oh, okay, so you have no concerns about a nuke going off in Los Angeles, Dallas, Chicago, Miami. All other major metropolitan areas just in Manhattan, John. That's strange, isn't it? That's really strange. Oh, yeah. Strange. And then take all these other things, fit them together, John. They all fit together like a... Like a John. <laughs> Guess what? Get, get, ready for, get ready to freak out, bro. Get ready to freak out. The Jonathan Kleck $10 bill prophecy. 
the, on the ten dollar bill. I think it's the ten dollar bill. Um, is it the That's ten it. or the five? I it's forgot the ten. About that. It has the You're nuclear right. bomb in the background. It has the uh, when it's folded, it shows the um, the Watchtower Building in downtown New York. It used to be uh, the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses uh, headquarters, and they converted it and whatever and sold it. But anyway, uh, um, uh, it shows that building. Uh, oh my gosh! And a, and a nuclear. It even has the color orange in the cloud behind it. So the, is it, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Praise Jesus. And I'm not sure if it's the $5 bill prophecy or the $10 bill prophecy. I get confused about them. But um, praise Jesus. Also, don't forget, Times of Israel, uh, way back in, um, I think it was 2012, uh, this is uh, a quote from the headline. Um, no, it's from November 11th of 2012. Amen. Quote, only, this is the headline, Times of Israel, only the nuclear option can work against Iran, says former Israeli Defense Force, Force chief. Okay, and it goes on to talk about uh, this guy and, you know, that – anyway, so praise Jesus. Let's go ahead and move into the Project Blue Beam Lucifer Twisted Alien Demon Trickery part of the show. Glory to Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray. We just lift you up and magnify and glorify your holy name, Lord God. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for those who want to spread the word about what could be coming, what could be coming upon this earth, the deception and the depth of the deception from the bowels of hell, Father God. We pray in Jesus' name that they are able to snip this part of the radio show off, Father God, that they're able to send it, they're able to send links, they're able to send uh, uh, MP3 files, WMA files, and links, Father God, that Jimmy Prophet, Father, in Jesus' name, will feel led to put, to put this up on YouTube as he has been. Father, we just pray that every person will participate in this, in, in, in their opportunities to, to reach out to people and change their lives and to warn those, the tribulation saints who will be left behind, Father God, the people who are asleep at the wheel, the people who are not practicing, practicing righteousness as we're instructed to. Lord, we pray that we, we, as your holy and righteous saints, Father God, can reach out to these people now, educate them, do whatever we can to plant seeds. And Father, more than anything, we ask you to bring the increase, Father, to water those seeds with the living waters of life, our King Jesus. For you make the soil holy, Father God. We ask you to make it fertile and water it. In Jesus' name we pray. And thank you, Lord God. So be it. Amen. Praise God. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So, who remembers back on 11, 12, 10? 11, 12, 10. The movie Skyline. We were just talking about the front loading, the lesser magic, and all that kind of stuff. What is, what it, what, was this some kind of lesser magic warning? The movie Skyline. Kenneth, do you remember the movie Skyline? Oh yeah, John. It was. Uh, in fact, I was on that one business trip, and they had the entire hotel done in the movie motif. And I get into my hotel room, and what what movie poster do I have over my bed? But the Skyline yeah. movie. I remember. Yeah, that. John. <laughs> that movie is front loading to the max. Right. So the question is, and this is the question, I know what I think, but folks, I'm not here to tell you what to think. We are all supposed to be good Bereans. Okay, when we play prophecies on this show, it is your responsibility to discern those prophecies. Over and over and over, praise Jesus, and again, folks, and I've even added a, a disclaimer to the prophecy document. If you want a copy of the prophecies, that, that some of the prophecies that we're tracking right now, praise Jesus, I have some of them published on the website, um, and it's a constant moving target, because over time, people start to dork things up, and sometimes the devil gets a hold of people, and stuff goes south. 
All right, and so we've even added a disclaimer to the prophecy document, but we're tracking a boatload of them, and they are all telling the same story. Praise Jesus. All right, and if you want to get a copy of that, just go to tribulation-now.net forward slash share. Thank you, Brother Lee. God bless you. S-H-A-R-E forward slash share dot net forward slash share. Praise God. All right, and you can just open it up. It's a PDF file. I al- we also have put up there for you the Russian World War III document, okay, and you can get a copy of that. It's got every article that I could get my hands on for the last couple of years that, it, that it, just right in your face of Russia indicating powerfully that Russia is absolutely going to nuke the United States of America, which we know is true because that's what the angel of the Lord told Dmitry Dudeman. Praise Jesus. That's what the angel of the Lord uh, told uh, uh, Henry Groover. Praise Jesus. All right, so anyway, skyline. So the question is, the question is, was Bluebeam, many of the non-rapture believing people out there think that Project Bluebeam is going to be, they're going to fly in a bunch of spacecraft or whatever, or from outer space, from satellites or whatever, there's going to be these blue beams that appear, and and it's going to ultimately trick people and suck them up into the sky, just like the movie Skyline front loads. So the question is, is that true? And if it is true, is it, is it, is it, see, why is that notion so popular amongst the people and the ministries in various places out there who do not believe in the rapture well it's because they think there is no rapture so skyline is a warning that that uh, that, and it what if it's not like that what if the real rapture results in lights going up into the sky because we are light beings Indeed we are, because our Father is the Father of lights. Read, do a word search in the Bible about what happens when you get the glory light of God on you, Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 4. Glory light, it makes us shine. And we're going to talk about that tonight, because it's all connected together. And we're gonna, we're, But we're going to start out first with this part of the show. We're going to cover, listen to this. This is Hal Lindsey. God bless Hal Lindsey. The more... Man, he he is awesome. Praise God. Listen to this. This is how Lindsay on the movie Skyline. On last week's broadcast, I discussed the recent claims of a group of former U.S. Air Force officers. They accused the Pentagon and the CIA of covering up evidence of extraterrestrial visits. In a press conference last week, the former officers told of witnessing incursions over U.S. military bases by unidentified flying objects or UFOs. Several of them told stories of disc-shaped flying objects directing beams of light down into U.S. missile silos. As I noted last week, all the participants agreed that the UFOs seemed interested in disabling our nuclear missiles, perhaps in an effort to keep us from destroying ourselves. If they're out there, we want very much to believe that they are nicer than we are. Also last week, I told you about a report in the London Sunday Times. The Times detailed the selection of a United Nations diplomat to serve as an alien greeter and as head of the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, also known as UNUSA. The UN subsequently denied the rumors and insisted that UNUSA has been around since 1958 and is charged with coordinating the peaceful use of outer space. But you know, the old saying, where there's smoke, there's fire, something Amen. caused more than one reputable news outlet to report that plans were underway to create a protocol for welcoming extraterrestrials to the Earth. Good job, Al. At the time of that report, I had not yet heard of the new movie that is due to be released on November 12th. It's called Skyline. <laughs> Get out of the city. The 
and shine blinding beams of blue light down to the earth. If anybody looks up into the beam, it locks in on them, and they are drawn physically up into the spacecraft. Check out the movie's advertising poster. By the images depicted, it could just as easily be for a movie about the rapture of the church. Lindsay, wow, man, uh, Kenneth, <laughs> that's amazing, John. You know, it's, it's. I, I don't. I, we're probably going to have to, probably have to devi- define Project Bluebeam. You know, but I mean, it's gonna, they're going to have these images. They're, they're, um, they're going to have the Christ for the Christians, Muhammad, Buddha, Krishna, and they're going to merge them all together, and they're going to have this this coming savior. And, and it's going to be the fulfillment of all these mysteries and these prophecies and these revelations, and everything is going to just hinge on this. And, and there's even talk among some of the people that are researching this that they're going to have a resurrection of that Montauk technology, where where they're going to be able to, you know, beam people and do things and, you know, mass disappearances of people. That's the point. So, anyways, um, for Hal Lindsey to come out with this, wow. That's oh, yeah. all I can say. Well, and and even in the movie, you have that guy cowering in the kitchen behind his counter, going, "This is like the blankety blank rapture." <laughs> so they came right out and said it in the movie. So the question is, is Project Bluebeam real, and what is Project Bluebeam? So what we're going to do, a lot of people who listen to this radio show, we have folks of all different types. Praise Jesus, old and young. Children and parents, um, elderly saints that I love dearly, many of them I write to, uh, folks from all over the world, different countries. It's such a blessing. And a lot of people don't know where to find this information. And if they did, they just don't have time to read it. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to define what the world or most – the world. Okay, so how do I – basically what happened was back in 1994 – Back in 1994, a piece of uh, – an article was released by a fellow. Uh, basically, it's the article uh, talking about this guy. Well, the guy that actually wrote it, his name is Serge Monast, okay? S-E-R-G-E-M-O-N-A-S-T. And that's what started the notion of a Project Blue Beam actually existing, now, like I said, the no rapture people out there point to this guy, Sir J. Monast, and they say, look, it's a conspiracy. NASA's involved. It's a massive plan. The black ops, they're going to trick the whole world. They're going to use satellites and lights and beams, and they're going to make everybody think that people were raptured. But it was the aliens that did it. See, that's what they point to. Now, the question is, could it be both? Because, see, I'm a firm believer that the mistake we as humans make, you know, with our tiny little peanut brains, is that we want it to be one thing or the other thing. But we rarely ever consider all of the above. What if the rapture happens, and it looks a lot like Project Blue Beam, and it's followed thereafter by some kind of technological power signs and lying wonders, fallen angel, alien demons, starcraft, blue beam, skyline thing. Wow. Because then they can tell the whole world that it wasn't the rapture, just like they're telling everybody right now. And Hal Lindsey knows this stuff, because Hal Lindsey's a rapture guy. Praise Jesus. So I'm going to go ahead and read this, and I want to get Kenneth to comment because he's got a lot of expertise in a, in a lot of these things. So I'm going to read it, you know, uh, basically the Project Blue Beam article by Sir J. Molas going, Monast going all the way back to 1994. 
All right. Sir J. Manasse, 1945, December the 5th to 1996. Another journalist, both of whom were researching Project Bluebeam, died of a heart attack, quote, heart attack, within weeks of uh, each other, uh, and neither had a history of disease. So they're implying that he was murdered, which is very popular in the black ops. Sir J. was in Canada. The other Canadian journalist was visiting Ireland. Prior to his death, the Canadian government abducted Sir Jay's daughter in an attempt to dissuade him from pursuing his research in the Project Bluebeam. So that implies that it's he's telling the truth, right? His, at least as he saw it. His daughter was never returned. Pseudo heart attacks are one of the alleged method uh, of death induced by Project Bluebeam. So they uh, allege. Praise God. All right, now, I'm going to fast forward right into the heart of the article. NASA's Project Blue Beam, Sir Jamin asks, quote, The infamous NASA, Na- National Aeronautics and Space Administration, Blue Beam Project has four, four different steps in order to implement the New Age religion. Wow, the New Age. Aliens, the Galactic Federation of Light, uh, the Ashtar Command. Well, yeah, wait until you figure, find out how that weaves into this. Praise Jesus. The New Age religion, remember this is written in 1994 when there was no Galactic Federation of Light, when there was no Ashtar Command crew. With the Antichrist at its head, we must remember that the New Age religion is, very, uh, is the very foundation for the new world government. That's why I maintain the aliens are a humongous part of the Revelation 13 beast government. Amen. Without which religion, the the dictatorship of the New World Order is completely impossible. I'll repeat that. Without a universal belief in the New Age religion, the success of the New World Order will be impossible. Written in 1994. That is why the Blue Beam Project is so important to them, but has been so well hidden until now. Quote, engineered earthquakes and hoaxes discovered. The first step in the NASA Blue Beam Project concerns the breakdown, uh, the reevaluation of all archaeological knowledge. Uh, ancient aliens. It deals with the setup with artificially created earthquakes at certain precise locations on the planet of supposedly new discoveries, which will finally explain to all people the error of all fundamental religious doctrines. uh, Folks, this is ancient aliens in play. The falsification of this information will be used to make all nations believe that their religious doctrines have been misunderstood for centuries and uh, misinterpreted. The Sumerian gods are our creators. There you go, folks. Psychological preparations that first step uh, uh, at uh, that fir- will be that first step have already been implemented in the film 2001: A Space Odyssey, the Star Trek series, which, by the way, Gene Roddenberry met regularly with a woman by the name of Phyllis Schlemmer, who was channeling <clears throat> these these fallen angels that referred to themselves as, as the Elohim of Genesis 1, from the ancient Hebrew text. They actually said that in her book, The Only Planet of Choice. goes on to say, and the movie Independence Day, all of which deal with an invasion from outer space and the coming together of all nations to repel the invaders. The last film's Jurassic Park deals with the theories of evolution and claim God's, wor- God's words are lies. Praise Jesus. And that's the first major section, engineered earthquakes. That's, he's referring to HARP, and I don't even think HARP was active back in the, that day or even existed possibly back then. I'm not sure. Uh, but engineered earthquakes and uh, hoax discoveries. Now, what we do know is that the ancient aliens information, the forbidden archaeology that they're presenting is actually not hoaxed, which makes this, you know, information even more troubling to those who are easily deceived by the trickery of the Galactic Federation of Lies. I mean, light. uh, Praise Jesus. Kenneth? Yeah, he he packed a lot of information in that article, John, and and he didn't just... That wasn't his only claim to infamy, if you want to call it that, by the establishment. Um, He also was um, pretty big into the protocols, and what he tried to do, because everybody's poo-pooed that, you know, Oh, that's anti-Semitic. You can't, you can't talk about that. What he did is he, he took in in '95, right before this came out, he published this um, thing he called it the Protocols of Toronto, 
666. <laughs> what he basically did is he took he took the whole anti-Semitic um, moniker that was associated for so long with the protocols, and he just he just covered the facts, only the facts. And he said that a Masonic group called 666 had been gathering the world's powerful to establish a new world order and control the minds of the masses. So, you know, he's he's pretty much on track, John. And then a lot of people say that um, that movie, and I, I can't, I'll never forget it. Terry treated me and took me to it because I was big into my Cooper time when it came out. It was it was back in the 90s, and Mel Gibson was the star, and it was conspiracy theory. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, they, a lot of people claim that that was all all modeled after Serge. So he, he's a, I'll tell you what, he's a pioneer in what he was doing, brother. Amen. Um, now, but, yeah, amen, brother. And it gets it, a lot more. We're going to hit a lot more. The next part of his article on this, which arguably is a whistleblower uh, in treatment on what is called Project Hidden, the Black Ops Project uh, from NASA, supposedly. Before I read the next section, uh, I want you to know that I did research this years and years ago, about five years ago, maybe more. <clears throat> and I was able to find a, a, a PDF document out on the Internet because the government, they, they hide, the, the Black Ops people hide stuff in front of you, right in your, right in your face. And then they, they make fun of conspiracy theorists publicly so that when you say something, you're like, well, they're like, you watch too much TV. You know, that kind of stuff. To discredit you. But I was able to find a document uh, written by the United States Air Force on high field of view holographic displays. HFOV. High field of view. And inside that document, it talked about aluminum particulate strontium, and barium substrates. Now, why is that important? Because the, if you go to YouTube.com and you type in, you type in um, uh, the friendship case, YouTube.com and you type in the friendship case, you will learn about an encounter with these diminutive humans, these little four-foot-tall human alien beings uh, that where these Italian men were uh these Italian men were actually uh uh collecting stuff large large quantities of stuff and putting it into trucks for these diminutive human beings okay so so go look it up go listen to the the, the documentary that was written called the or that was done called the friendship case they were collecting strontium and barium back then which had very little value Page 78 of my book on aliens, impregnated women, extraterrestrials, and God, which you can't get anymore, it says diminutive humans. It's describing different types of, quote, aliens or fallen angelic beings. And it's talking about on page 78, it calls this one uh, species, if you will, or whatever, race or whatever you want to call it, it calls them dwarfen, diminutive humans. Quote, it says, diminutive, hum diminutive humans, you're called dwarfen, who have allegedly been encountered in or near caverns or in various parts of the world, and in some cases on UFOs. Listen to this. Some of these were apparently involved in the original rebellion of the angelic beings, the ange fallen angels, against the Creator, that's our Heavenly Father, after being deceived and misled by the former archangel turned egocentric tyrant. Lucifer. Excuse me. Is that, like, impossible? Praise Jesus. It's not science fiction, folks. It's science fact. All right. Back to the Blue Beam article. The big space show in the sky. The second step in the NASA Blue Beam project involves a gigantic space show with three-dimensional optical holograms and sounds, laser projection of multiple holographic images in different parts of the world, each receiving a different, a different uh, image according to the predominant regional, uh, national, religious, um, uh, praise God. All right, uh, uh, let me go ahead and go back here. Uh, okay, to this predominant regional, national, religious faith, okay? So this, by the way, is mimicking 
So it alleges that there will be holographic images generated in the sky, and it will be geographically set up so that different, like if it's in if it's in the Middle East, it'll be you know uh, Muhammad perhaps, or if it's in uh, if it's in India, it, they'll be seeing you know Krishna perhaps. It says, in order to understand that, we must study various secret services, research done in the last 25 years. The Soviets have perfected an advanced computer and even exported them and fed them with the, uh, with the minute physiological particulars based on their studies of the anatomy of electromechanical composition of the human body and the studies of electrical, chemical, and biological properties of the human brain. These computers were fed, as well, with the languages of all human cultures and their meanings. The, dialect, the dialects of all cultures have been fed into the computers from satellite transmissions. The Soviets began to feed the computers with objective programs like the ones of the new Messiah. It also seems that the Soviets, with New World Order people, uh, he's referring to the Soviets as the New World Order people, so he doesn't quite understand, but that's okay, have resorted to suicidal methods with the human society by allocating uh, electronic wavelengths for every person in every society and culture to induce suicidal thoughts if the person doesn't comply with the dictates of the New World Order. Now he goes on to explain, there are two different there are two different aspects of the big space show in the sky. Quote, the first is the space show itself. Folks, has anybody out there seen the ABC miniseries V for visitors? I hope that you have. Because if you have, it's another, not only does it have the concepts of this built into that ABC miniseries, but it also has shape-shifting reptilians built in, and the, the falling away of the church, and disillusion of the church, and the power signs and lying wonders. It's got it all. Should, should get, if you got Netflix, get yourself the DVDs or whatever. ABC miniseries V. V is in Victor. V is in Visitors. Look it up. It's amazing. Quote, there are two different aspects of step two. The first is the space show. Where does the space show come from? The space show, the holographic images, will be used in a simulation of the ending, uh, ending during which all nations will be shown scenes that will be the fulfillment of what which they desire to verify the prophecies and adversary events. So he's talking about the messiahs will match the region. These will be projected from satellites onto the sodium layer at about 60 miles above the Earth. We see tests every once in a while, but they are called UFO and flying saucer sightings. Okay, now he doesn't understand that, but that's okay. Praise God. Now, he goes on to say, but I'm going to stop real, real quick. Just You need to know this. Go back to the high field of view holographic displays that require strontium and barium. That is what is in the chem... One of the things, there's a lot of nefarious, evil, dark stuff inside the chemtrails. We covered that on another show that we did entitled, uh, you know, Chemtrails, um, Praise Jesus. It's, uh, it's on tribulation-now.org. You can listen to that show in the middle black banner section in the middle there. It, there's a link to the radio show entitled Chemtrails, Harp, Project Blue Beam, and Mind Control. So we touch upon Project Blue Beam a little bit in there, but we're hitting it a lot heavier tonight. But that, that show was two parts and absolutely packed with stuff. So if you want to go right to the meat of that topic, just go 50% of the way through the show and you'll be really close. He goes on to say, so again, we have evidence that the, that the United States Air Force has documented paperwork about HFOV holographic display. So it matches this, and that was a relatively recent document, as I recall. He goes on to say, the results of these deliberately staged events will be to show the world, the new Christ, the new Messiah, in this case, he points to Maitreya, because Maitreya has been around forever. But folks, it's not just Maitreya. You've got this Ashtar star freak. You've got these other ent entities. You've got Sananda, which is a fake Jesus. I have a picture of the fake Jesus with Nicholas Rorick, the mystic, who was involved in putting the Pyramid of Gia and the New World Order stuff on the back of the dollar bill uh, in the Roosevelt uh, time in office. It's all, it, all this stuff is covered in great detail uh, in, a, in a documentary called Secret Mysteries of America beginnings 
Secret Mysteries of America's Beginnings, which was done by a group of Christians. Praise God for their work. It shows the fake Jesus actually walking there with them. These are, these are real beings, folks. They're real beings. They're beings. And Brother Zen Garcia and myself both believe that they are shape-shifting Anunnaki. Shapeshifters. It can change just like Lucifer in the shape of a human. It's covered in the Nagamati codices. It's covered in the, in the Testament of Amaran. It's covered, it's covered in, in the Testament of Reuben. It, it, it mentions them. And the archons all throughout the Nagamati codices. Some of them are, were part of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Praise Jesus. All right, so he goes on, the results of these deliberately staged events will be to show the new, the new, quote, Christ, new Messiah, Maitreya, for the immediate implementation of the new world religion. Enough truth will be foisted upon unsuspecting world to hook them into the lie. And then it goes on and it says, the project has per perfected the ability for some device, referred to as tractor beams by the UFOologist, to lift up an enormous number of people, as in the rapture as in he calls it a rapture, and whisk the entire group into a never-never land. We see tested this device in the abduction of humans by those mysterious little gray aliens who snatch people out of their beds and through the windows into waiting motherships. The calculated resistance to the universal religion and the new Messiah and the ensuing holy wars will result in the loss of human life on a scale never imagined before in the history of in human history. The project, I'm still quoting from his article, the Project Blue Beam will pretend to be the universal fulfillment of all prophecies of old, as major an event as that which occurred 2,000 years ago. In principle, it will make use of the skies as a movie screen. Strontium and barium, chemtrails, dwarfin, friendship case, all linked together. 50, 60 years of time. Impossible, but possible. He goes on to say, computers will coordinate the satellites and software already in place will run the sky. Holographic images are based on nearly identical signals combined to produce an image or hologram with deep perspective, HFOV, high field of view, which is equally applicable to acoustic ELF, VLF, and LF waves and optical phenomenon. Folks, again, this is all mind control equipment. This is all about Gwen Towers. This is all about uh, uh, extra low frequency and, and low frequencies. Uh, let's do a study on mind control, MK Ultra. It's all proven technology. They used it in the Gulf War. They put on the helicopters in the original first Gulf War. Uh, they, they, they projected these um, uh, specific low frequency um, uh, waves down and caused the uh, revolution guard to surrender voluntarily. They just came out of the... We surrender because it strikes horror into the mind. They can strike ecstasy into people. They can cause ecstasy. They can cause horror. Mass hysteria, all with specific low, ultra-low frequencies. Praise Jesus. All right, so again, um, he goes in to expand upon this uh, in great detail. If you want to um, uh, uh, find this article, it's at educate-yourself.org. It's at other locations as well. And you can search on Project Blue Beam, Sergey Monast, S-E-R-G-E-M-O-N-A-S-T. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Father. So again, that's the, that is the testimony of a guy who obviously believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is ratting out the New Age. Uh, he may not have all the data that we have today, amen, but he did a pretty good job of tying together uh, what I believe is a absolute, real, fallen, angelic being deception that is coming upon this earth, potentially coming upon this earth. The question is, Will it happen, you know, shortly after the real rapture to completely tie a knot and deceive those unfortunate saints that are left behind? Praise Jesus. Praise you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Warnings from Ashtar. 
Oh, it gets better and better. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I wish I could just, uh, just get all this information out to everybody. So much. There's so much. Warnings from Ashtar. New Age, I'm reading an article. New Age writer Thelma Terrell claims to have received messages from Ashtar, the leader of an alien confederation. Now, folks, before I continue reading this, you simply must, if you are interested in this subject and you want to do a little bit of homework, you've got to go out on the Internet. And, folks, just be careful of the sources out there. The, 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 the devil is like a roaring lion seeking to wh- whom he may devour. All right? And some of the people that are publishing this stuff, well, they don't really have all their stories straight. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Father. All right? All right, so anyway, but I'm letting you know that out on the Internet you can type The Dulcie Book, okay? And The Dulcie Book, never mind who's publishing it, forget about that. All right, but the book is out there, and it was written by a – he claims to be a Christian man by the name of Bruce Allen Walton, who is currently locked up in the Utah State Prison. They caught up with him. He used to work in the deep underground military bases where they have up to 58 different species of these things locked away most of which look human and can communicate with us telepathically. Praise God. Warnings from Ashtar. So read the Dulcie book because it talks about the Andro, Andromedan, Pleiadian, Pleiades, the Andro-Pleiadian reptilian conspiracy. It talks about how the greys are subordinates to the Draco and reptilian creatures, which are fallen seraphim. Seraphim are dragon creatures. That's why every other religion in the world, except for Jesus and and the Hebrew religion, every other religion worships the dragon. Why? Because they're fallen angels. Praise God. The, The Sumerian, quote, gods. That's what they are. Fallen angels, fallen seraphim. Look at a wikipedia.org and type seraph, S-E-R-A-P-H. They are the dragon creatures that fly around the throne room of God saying, Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. So I think it's in Revelation 4 or 5. Praise Jesus. But when they're fallen, they get their wings clipped, as L.A. Marzulli puts it. Well said. All right, warnings from Ashtar. The New Age writer Thelma Terrell claims to have received messages from Ashtar, the leader of an alien confederation, (laughs) concerning the evacuation of millions around the globe. Those familiar with the Bible immediately see that Ashtar is nothing more than the same demon from Bible times, Asherah or Ashtoreth. But with a message that modern man wants to hear. In former days, Ashtar was considered a little g god, but now such talk is, for the most part, out of style. Therefore, Ashtar has become come back as a, quote, alien to warn the citizens of Earth of the impending rapture. However, the true reason for the evacuation of the planet is never given. When the rapture does occur, the demonic realm will be ready because they have been warning people of just such an event. Ashtar has communicated that Earth changes will be the primary factor in mass evacuation of the planet. (laughs) Uh, Sixth seal? (laughs) Stats together like it's unbelievable. Earth changes will be the primary factor in the Mass alien evacuation of the planet. So when does the rapture happen? Well, I maintain that the rapture happens at the end of the sixth seal. What's it say in the, at the end of the sixth seal? We're talking right now. We're talking about a, a, a global financial collapse. That is the is the behold a black horse. That is the uh uh when when a denarius is what it costs for a a a a uh, a, um, a, a, a thing of wheat a, a, you know basically a loaf of bread is what the what the implication is okay and then right after that you have behold a pale horse the four seal which is global war that's what we're heading toward this is all the seals folks and right here they're talking about earth changes will be the primary factor in mass evacuations of this planet oh really <laughs> Praise God. That's Revelation 6. And I looked and I saw the sixth seal. And behold, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of air. Three days of darkness. And the moon became like blood. 
and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as fig trees drop its figs when shaken by a mighty wind. And the sky receded as a scroll when it's rolled up. And every mountain and island was moved out of place. There's your Edgar, Edgar Casey pole shift. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the commanders and the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and the rocks and the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 9. For God has not appointed us to what? To wrath. And the great day of his wrath has come. Revelation six seventeen. Bingo! Praise God. And then you go back to this Thelma Terrell, and she says, Earth changes will be the primary factor in the mass evacuation of this planet. Therefore, because of the impending events coming upon the Earth, the alien ships will come in close enough to lift people off the Earth in the twinkling of an eye. Even the terminology is borrowed from the Bible concerning the rapture when these Ashtar people talk about it. Our rescue ships will be able to come in close enough in the twinkling of an eye, they say, to set the lifting beams, the lifting beams in operation in a moment. And all over the globe where events warned it, this will be the method of evacuation. Mankind will be lifted, levitated, shall we say, by the beams from our smaller ships. These smaller craft will in turn taxi the persons to the larger ships overhead, higher in the atmosphere, where there is ample space and quarters and supplies for millions of people, says the, the Galactic Federation of Lies. The demons who are posing as aliens, and they're, they're fallen angels, they're not really demons. Uh, I'd call them fallen angel demons just to make it easy. But anyway, the, the, the fallen angelic beings that are posing as aliens will try to convince mankind they are in fact their saviors. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Ascended masters. They're going to demote Jesus and make him an ascended master, which they've already done. Alongside of Buddha, alongside of Krishna, alongside of all of them. Quote, we have seen the conditioning in the movies and people's minds and remember those stories and the events occur. Ashtar states that great uh, preparation and care has gone into the rescue of mankind. There is method and great organization and a detailed plan already near completion for the purpose of removing souls from this planet. This is a quote. In the event of catastrophic events, making a rescue necessary. Ashtar goes on to say, the great evacuation will come upon the world very suddenly. Wow. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, praise you, Jesus. Enter flight MH370. <laughs> praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, so you heard the testimony. You heard the prophecy of the pastor from, uh, you know, supposedly Africa saying supposedly that, you know, planes. He used a plural. He said multiple planes will disappear and then Israel will attack Iran. So was that a misstatement? Is there more planes to disappear? The second day that MH370 disappeared, I said publicly on Facebook, I said, I think it's the fallen angels. I think the fallen angels took it. And I wouldn't believe anything they said right now. Not a word. Because the upper echelon are part of a very, very dark, dark Land of Canaan series of Satanic and Luciferian sacrificial practices that rival the depths of darkness that the Mayans, the Incas, and other civilizations have been practicing in the past. Praise Jesus. Billy Graham's daughter on Missing Flight 370 and the Rapture from ChristianPost.com. Annie Graham, Lot's daughter, a Christian evangelist, 
uh, Billy Graham, uh, oh, daughter of Christian evangelist Billy Graham, recently drew a connection between the missing Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 and the rapture, as described in Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17. Lots, that's Annie Graham, um, founder of Angel Ministries, uh, made the connection on her personal blog just after the plane went missing. Lot suggested that the feeling of unknowingness and helplessness that has affected the world since the flight's disappearance on March 8th will be the same feeling experienced by mankind when the rapture happens and God comes back to earth to claim his followers for heaven. Non-believers will be left to wonder, where have all the people gone? Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Praise Jesus. And she goes on to talk about the the missing plane and everything. But she immediately, her spirit spoke to her in her heart and said, whoa, this has some kind of, I don't know, creepy connection to how people will feel when they're left behind. Praise God. That's a powerful, powerful revelation. Oh, look at here. And in her testimony, she actually talks about the name of the pastor. I didn't even know this. This is right here in the show notes. Folks, if you want a copy of the show notes, go to tribulation-now.net. It's the .net site. And Brother Lee puts uh, copies of the show notes. With It's just awesome. You can just flip through them on your web browser. It's incredible. But in there is this uh, article by Annie Graham daughter of Billy Graham. At the end, she says, the last paragraph says, shortly after the incident occurred on March 8th, the African-based Emmanuel TV network suggested that a self-styled Nigerian preacher, T.B. Joshua, reportedly predicted that the plane's disappearance in a, it predicted the plane's disappearance in a July 2013 sermon when he said that a large aircraft carrying over 200 people would develop a fault on the tarmac and in an Asian nation the preacher said that the problem could have been resolved by the tarmac uh, but due to the fault of of impatience it was not addressed and the plane disappeared while in the air Wow. Joshua reportedly felt so confident in his prophecy that he even said he would possibly write a letter to the embassy of the unnamed Asian country requesting officials to check all planes before takeoff. So hey, there you have it. Evidently, the guys, this, 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 this prophet that we played the audio, was his, he's a Nigerian preacher by the name of T.B. Joshua. Wow. Praise God. Uh, Sister Kathy, if you're, if, you, if you're listening, remind me to snippet that um, and, and put that in an email because that is really important. We need to remember that. Praise God. All right. Thank you, Jesus. All right, praise God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. All right. So, wow. So there you go. Uh, Yet another connection. But there's more. (laughs) This is awesome. Oh, we're so close, folks. We're we're so close. Thank you, Jesus. Please, Jesus, please, Maranatha. Father, please, Father God. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Make us strong to endure. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Praise you, Father. Next headline, NASA announces the rapture is an alien abduction. Really? Who says so? Sorry Park. Who's Sorry Park? Sorry Park is someone who loves Jesus. Sorry Park gets visions from the heavenly office of God, from the throne room of God. All right, if you go to www.heavenvisit.com forward slash sorry, S-O-R-I underscore park underscore 2.php, that's the whole link, and it's also in the show notes. Here's what it says. It's an excerpt. Wow. Listen to this. It was, this is, this is discussing a vision that she was given, Sorry Park. It was in the middle of downtown Los Angeles, California. 
Holy Spirit taught me that was on the Wil it was on Wilshire Boulevard. A young man and woman were walking in the sidewalk along the street. They were heading west with the man walking to the uh, bus side and the woman walking to the street side. Oh, bush side, uh, bushes like in trees. The woman was making an impassioned speech to the to the other uh I'm sorry the man was making an impassioned speech to the woman criticizing Jesus being lost in his rational criticism he called the bible irrational and made comments to ignore christianity the woman was walking carefully and praying inside without any response to his remarks, with her head down and a little bit uh, 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 and a book held to her chest. Quote, have mercy on him, Lord, she said. In the middle of her prayer, she suddenly heard loud trumpet in the sky. Rise up here. She looked up in the sky with her face full of joy and excitement. She had no time to express her joy because she was raised up into the air and the moment she looked, uh, the moment that she looked, he suddenly found her gone and looked around in bewilderment, be bewilderment to find her uh, when there was a clash in the street. The downtown street was a traffic jammed, which meant car accidents and fender benders instead of a huge one. God granted me spiritual knowledge as I was watching the scene and taught me that the trumpet sounds are only heard by the ones who are getting raptured. Okay, let's repeat that. Praise Jesus. God granted me the spiritual knowledge as I was watching the scene and taught me that the trumpet sounds are only heard by those who are getting raptured. Wow. I feel so sorry. So sorry for those who don't believe. She goes on to say, with much traffic in the area, cars were moving slowly. There would not be many people who were ascending into the air in those circumstances which gives some idea about how much spiritually corrupted the cities are. I was looking down at the scene high up in the air and asked Jesus, what will the world say about people being raised up in the air, Jesus? He gave me an accurate and detailed answer. Jesus said to Sorry Park, and I quote, NASA of the United States will make an announcement that thousands of UFOs from a distant planet in the universe surrounded the entire Earth and abducted numerous people around the world with a powerful ultra-modern sucking machine in one moment, promising to make further investigations into the matter and trying to cover it up. Praise God. Now, let's look at some super duper cool, fascinating, fun facts. <laughs> As if those weren't super duper cool. <laughs> it gets better. It really does. Praise Jesus. All right, look at, look at this. Okay, so there's a movie out there, and it's called Revelation Road. Now, I believe in spiritual synchronicity amongst particularly God's Saints, God's saints who fear him, his righteous and holy saints who fear him. Praise God. And Sister Kathy and I share notes about, you know, godly movies whenever we can because we want to, you know. Well, it was just a couple of days ago that she said, oh, you got to watch Revelation Road. And oh, by the way, folks, I highly recommend Faith Like Potatoes. If you want to look for one there, that's a great one. Faith Like Potatoes. And bring your, bring your hankies because you'll be crying. But anyway, the movie Revelation Road is available on Netflix for those of you who have it for free. For, you can, it's an instant watch for those of you, that, you know, who have it. And Revelation Road is multiple parts, but at the end of the first part, 
they depict the rapture. Now, I understand the man who wrote the movie, who, who you know directed and put together the movie, is is a Christian. The question is, where did he get the visual notions that he put in the movie? Where did they come from? Because you know, like my mom used to say back in the seventies, I wasn't born in a barn, <laughs> and I've never seen anything quite like this. It's rather jaw dropping. Remember that our Father is the Father of lights. Remember that the glory light shines upon you. Remember that Brother Jesse Duplantis, after he came back from heaven, was shining with a white light as he was walking to the podium that night to, do, to, to, to speak to people. See, the glory light comes upon you. You glow white and brilliant white light. It's, it's awesome. Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 3. It's awesome. Praise God. As a matter of fact, folks, during the harvest, I understand that we're going to have that glory light upon us. The scripture that talks about the harvest is Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 5, actually. No, it's 3, 1 through 3. Arise, shine, for your light has come. <laughs> Folks, if you haven't seen Revelation Road and you read Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 3, it's life-changing. <laughs> Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. There's your three days of darkness. And deep darkness the people See, that's all revelation. That's the sixth seal there, see? But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. That's the, that's the white, it's the white, brilliant white light. The Gentiles, that would be the unrighteous, shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. That's the harvest, folks. Isn't that cool? It's awesome. So in the movie, Revelation Road, during the rapture, the people turn a brilliant white light color first, and then they turn into little balls of brilliant white light, and they go shooting up into the sky. All right, and here's a little snippet. It's just mostly audio and sound effects, but listen to this. This is from the movie. This is the rapture scene uh, from the movie uh, Revelation Road. And if you type in uh, Revelation Road, the rapture in YouTube, you can watch the whole thing. Praise Jesus. Listen to this. I'm going to cut that loose because of time, but um, basically there's these whoosh, whoosh, whooshing sounds, and then these white people turn brilliant white. The glory of the Lord is upon them, and then they turn into a white light, and they go shooting up into the sky, and then they pan the camera back above the earth in the dark, and all these white lights are shooting up into the sky. The question is, are they really white, or could they be a brilliant blue color? Well, I don't know. Listen to this. 
and the Pastor T.D. Hale dream from November 24th of 2012. This is the one where he sees Obama as with the spirit of Rehoboam in the Oval Office, and he sees a document. He hits the document on the desk of the Oval Office, which I believe is the peace agreement, and that's because there's waters and the splitting of Washington, D.C., and earthquakes and flooding and tsunamis and all that kind of stuff. Well, in the middle of that prophecy, this is a quote from that prophecy. Listen, quote, T.D. Hill. As I was still in the air, and I am going to try to explain this as best as I can, I saw America in this state of being covered with floodwaters, and then, all of a sudden, I saw beams of light quickly coming out of the floodwaters like at the speed of light going up into the air. Millions, it looked like. But at the moment, I was taken above the earth, and then I saw it all around the world. Wow. Praise God. He saw, I believe with all my heart, T.D. Hale saw the rapture of the bride of Jesus Christ at that moment. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I've written over 420 articles under the pen name of Johnny Baptist. I don't even know how many hundreds of radio shows we've done here on this Blog Talk radio show by the will of God. Your will be done, Father, not mine. And how many radio shows that myself, Kenneth, and Kathy, we've all appeared upon by the grace of God. I praise you, Father, for that. Of those 420 articles that I wrote on Tribulation Now, Many of them have proven to be true. I wrote them because I felt led. I just felt led. And it's very humbling to realize so many of those things have been confirmed through scriptures and dreams and visions and testimonies and articles and just praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Way back, uh, a couple of years ago, about three three plus years ago, I wrote an article entitled Blue 21, B-L-U-E, Blue, Blue 21. So if you want to read the article, you can just go type in Google, Blue, B-L-U-E, the number 21, space, tribulation, dash now. It'll come right up. And you'll see it. it. has the date on there. It has a lot of, lot of stuff in there. Praise God. Up there, there was a fellow by the name of Doherty who had his vision from 1996 republished. I believe it's the Doherty vision, but anyway, it's on the website. And it was published on Five Doves many years later. I'm just going to go ahead and read it to you. (laughs) Oh, Father, you are so awesome. Listen to this. This is entitled The Rapture Vision of 1996. Quote, The coming events or warnings to happen just before the rapture takes place. Now remember, every person who gets a vision, dream, prophecy, they only get a little peace. They only get a little peace. Those who are fervently seeking the Lord, that are are part of the body of Jesus Christ, they're not living in a Maxwell smart cone of silence, sealing them off from the rest of the global body of Jesus. Those who are hungry, they search and they look at YouTube videos and they search through prophecies and dreams and vision because they want to be with Jesus more than anything. And then if you keep track of it all, it all matches if it's coming from the throne room. Praise God. And all this is on the prophecy document at tribulation-now.net forward slash share, S-H-A-R-E. And please heed, if you will, the disclaimer in the beginning that warns folks about Deuteronomy 18.22. When the prophet speaks in the name of the Lord and that thing does not happen nor come to pass, the prophet, uh, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. So you don't throw rocks and call him names. All right, now, so 
we all see, as Brother Maurice Sklar said, and absolutely correct, we all see through the mirror dimly. You only get bits and pieces from each vision, each... Nobody gets it all. Quote, The coming events or warnings to happen just before the rapture takes place. Dearly beloved doves and brothers and sisters in Jesus' name, this is the vision given in 1996 concerning worldwide events that will happen from one to three weeks before the actual rapture. This I told the many friends and was often hurt at their disbelief and cold shoulders of many Christian friends. And then I finally just put it on the back shelf and let it sit there for 13 years. I now feel the rapture is so close that it needs to be told urgently. I agree with our brother, our Christian brother, John Ting, that there has been so many dreams and visions of the rapture that probably no one will believe this one either, but that's okay. All I pray for is everyone to remember. Like our Bible says, the vision will prove itself with time and testing by remembering these visions, by remembering these visions. Remember, I did this article in 2010, I think. It will and can save you much needless suffering. The Lord does not want to hurt his bride. Quote, the appearance of a large sphere in the sky. There is going to appear above the earth in the sky a strange object. It will be large and a sphere shaped like a ball. Kind of like the Anunnaki Death Star, the copper or bronze colored Death Star ball that sits outside of the Vatican Library, perhaps. Like the Death Star that was shown to Augusto Perez in a vision. It will look like it's been built in sections like a football with huge rivets in the seams. Many will call it a UFO. I don't know. It will have the color of copper or bronze. Wow. Praise you, Jesus. It will be on every TV around the world. People will be shocked, shocked like the World Trade Center. People will be glued to their TVs, but you don't. The minute you see this, run to the closest food store and get enough canned food and bottled water for about three weeks. Because between 1 and 24 hours after this project is seen worldwide, there's going to be a massive impact or collision on our sun's surface. It's going to happen on our blind side. We can't see it coming. It's going to be a super-sized twin asteroid, this person believes, hitting some kind of a vital spot, releasing a major solar storm, and knocking out all of the Earth's electricity around the world. Two to three weeks of trial and miracles, he says. Now, this is the harvest, folks. This is the harvest. This guy saw this in 1996. Now, this is what's going to happen in the next two to three weeks. While the electricity is off, within a within few days, the whole world will start to go crazy with hunger. This matches Maurice Sklar's vision or dream. The banks and the ATMs can't work without electricity. No gas, pumps, food, transportation, no refrigeration, total darkness, robbers, rapists, murderers will see right away and no one can call the police for help because the solar storm has burned up all the communication satellites, cell phones, and, and telephones. The law can't even call each other. It's going to be a total breakdown in large cities. There will be gunshots and screams into the night. Millions will be behind locked doors praying and begging for God's mercies for help and protection. He will answer millions of prayers. Millions will ask for forgiveness. And the Lord and his saints will perform millions of miracles during these weeks. Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 3. Listen to this. Now remember, this could be the electromagnetic pulse that was shown to Maurice Clark. And it might, this, you know, maybe the part that he doesn't have right, because everybody seems to get a little bit not correct. Who knows? But maybe it's an electromagnetic pulse by a nuke set off in New York or over the atmosphere. Who knows? Because that was what was shown to Maurice. Atmospheric detonation. Wow. I don't know. But it goes on to say, three weeks later after the rapture. Or, I'm sorry, three weeks later, the rapture. So supposedly three weeks, according to this person's vision, we all see through the mirror dimly. So no matter what, you've got to keep on hanging in there, believing, praising, praising, praising. I have an MP3 player with a little built-in uh, speaker, and I dumped over a bunch of radio shows so I can show people. It runs off of uh, AA batteries, and i got a bunch. And I can go over to my neighbor's houses and play radio shows that we did talking about the things that are coming upon the earth. Praise God. And you can also go to tribulation-now.org, and you can click on uh, Most Critical Prophecies. In the black banner section, just click on that link and just print that page. You can show that to people. It talks about all these things. 
Quote, this is, this is back to the 1996 vision. This is unbelievable, folks. Remember what T.D. Hill saw. Beams of light. Then, after about three weeks of this, the rapture will happen. Although, three weeks of people crying out, uh, people, uh, uh, the, the darkness, uh, millions behind locked doors begging for God's mercy. See, I believe this is the three days of darkness, probably. He says, although there are different time zones around the world, the Lord showed it will be night here in Florida, he says. In this vision, I was taken in the spirit out into the woods behind my house in Florida. It's from 1996. During the spring or early summer, <sighs> that's so exciting, it started at night. I didn't hear any trumpet sounds or words come up hither, but I know there's going to be so because the Bible says so. I was standing there in the spirit, of course, in the middle of some trees, and huge and a huge blue beam of light came down like a big flashlight about 30 feet circled around me. A blue beam. A blue beam? The blue light was identical in color to a welder's arc light at night. It was so blinding, I put my hands over my eyes to see if I could see where or what this light was coming from. And then I noticed in the distant night sky, north, south, east, and west of me, blue-colored stars jetting off the ground, spiraling upwards and traveling fast. They were heading for the bright blue object that was shining, that beam of light down upon me, it could have been the Lord or an open door to heaven. I really could not tell. It was so bright and blinding. Wow. That's very similar to Revelation Road, except theirs were white lights, not blue. He goes on to say, quote, Anyway, these little blue stars were going up in clusters, different numbers depending on the size of the town around me. Then, all of a sudden, when they reached about nine o'clock high, they burst ten times their original size. And then I realized it was those alive in Christ joining, joining those dead in Christ. I was too far away to see any new regenerated bodies or white gowns, but I'm sure they were there. Then suddenly I was again taken out of my body off to the side. I look at myself standing in the light. That's when I saw my own flesh glossing white as lightning. All my flesh, head, and arms, my clothes remained the same. Then instantly I vanished. All my clothes fell off to the ground. And from what I saw in this vision, I was the last to go because all the alive in Christ had joined the risen dead. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, it is only by your will. It is only by your awesome will, Father God. Holy Lord Jesus, that we're here tonight hearing this, that we're able to share this information. Oh, my heart breaks for those who do not understand these things. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus. I lift up all those who do not see these things and I pray that you will reveal these mysteries before them before it is too late. And for those whom your will is to stay, Father, or whom their personal choices preclude them from understanding these great and awesome mysteries of your Holy Bible, Father God, I pray that you will be with them that the elect shall not be deceived by the trickery of the fallen angels, the power signs and lying wonders. Father, all the glory and power, majesty and dominion to you. 
both now and forever and ever. We lift you up. We praise your holy name. We thank you for this insight. And we pray, Lord God, that you will instill upon each of us a steadfast spirit of boldness to spread this information out, to save as many souls as we can, to wake up as many people as we can before it's too late. Because, Father, you know why. Amen.